Sometimes I know we disagree. Seem like we both on different pages. It's like we're riding on a roller coaster. Bishop on deck. Salute down. Face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Psalm 125 verse 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so let the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead, forth, lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. Heavenly Father, the God of our father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord, we come to in the name of you, Son Jesus the Christ, Father God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord, for another Sabbath. We pray for those who are sick in the midst of us, Father God. We pray for swift and quick healing. We pray for the leadership of our URC, Father God, the bishop, the deacons, the captains, the officers. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit to put in these men to continue, Lord, teaching thy word. To the folk of the earth, to the twelve tribes who are scattered. We pray for the healing of the nation of Israel, Father God. We also pray for each and every kept out there, Father God, who are keeping that law, statue, and that commandment, Lord. We pray for these men, Lord, that's keeping you laws, that you may heal them, Lord. We know you can change them, Father God. We thank you again, Father God, for everything. We ask you, Father God, that you destroy our enemies, those who hate us, those who want to see us rise, Father God. Don't forget the promise you make to our forefathers, Lord. You say when we return. You're going to forgive us of all our sin. Lord, it's time we start in return, Lord. We start in return, Lord. Keep your word, Father God, and have mercy on you people, Lord. Have mercy on you people, Father God. We specially pray, Father God, in these last days, Father God, that you provide for those in need, Father God, food, shelter, remnant, Lord. We thank you, we thank you again, Father God, for everything. Let the whole congregation say, hallelujah. 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 It's in the name of you, Son Jesus the Christ, we give you all praise of glory. We also pray, Father God, for the food and the strong drink. It's in the name of you, Son Jesus the Christ, we pray and thank thee. Amen. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, hand salute. Salute down. Face sisters. To the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Oh, praise. Deacon Abiel, welcome back home, bro. Hey. <laughs> welcome back home, bro. Good to see you, bro. 
And also welcome back all the captains with us today. Good to see all of your the officers that's visiting. Also welcome. Uh, brothers and sisters, get your Bible out, your pen, paper. Take notes, take notes, take notes. Uh, I know some of you don't know how important it is to take notes. It is important. Believe it or not. And to review them. Believe it or not, those notes, later on when you become a teacher, you can use those same notes when you put a class together. Believe it or not. I know it's hard for you to believe, but I'm telling you. Believe it or not. I got, I got notes from... 2007. I still got, I don't throw my notebooks away. Don't, do not throw your notebooks away. Listen, if your notebook is full, get another one, but save that one, I'm telling you. Do not throw those away. Those are, those are things that you can use. When, later on, when you become a teacher, you're teaching, you can put class together. But take notes, take notes, take notes. It's very important. And that's how you learn too, by the way. So take notes. Oh, praise to the most high. How are you sisters doing this Sabbath day? Brothers, how are y'all doing? All oh, praises. Oh, that was a hearty one. I like that right there. All oh, praises. We say shalom to our brothers and sisters online. All right, today's topic, the name of today's class is the purpose of God's wrath and mercy. The purpose of God's wrath and mercy. One thing I want everybody to understand is that in this truth, Never be afraid of moving slow. We all got a different uh, learning curve. So again, in this truth, never be afraid of moving slow. But always be afraid of standing still. Chalk that up. Let's open up with uh, Genesis chapter 10 and verse 6. Uh, IT, y'all all right? They didn't drop a bomb. They didn't drop a bomb. All right, who's reading for me? Officer Yuri, sir. Hey, shalom, Yuri. Shalom, Bishop. All praises, all praises. Genesis 10, verse 6. Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mitzrayim, and Put and Canaan. So these are the sons of Ham, all right? Uh, IT, give me the uh, Zondervans, please. Put on the screen, Zondervan, if, if, who does not have a, a Zondervan's Bible Dictionary, you man, who does not have one? Okay, make sure you five brothers, you six brothers, make sure y'all get one of these. Go order it online. All right, let's go inside to Ham. This is Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Ham, perhaps hot, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. So Ham became the father of the dark races, but he's not the father of the Negroes. Go ahead. But the Egyptians. The Egyptians is who we're going to touch on in a few minutes. Go ahead. Ethiopians, mm -hmm. Libyans, and Canaanites. So these are who Ham became the father of. Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans. And when it says Libyans, it's talking about the, not these modern ones that you see today. That's what we're going to talk about that too. And the Canaanites, which are throughout southern Africa. All right? From there. From there. Give me the next one on Ishmael. Ishmaelite. So when you get your Bible dictionary, when you look up Ishmaelite, I-T-E at the end means people of. So meaning Ishmaelite means people of Ishmael. So read that to highlight it, Officer Yuri. Yes, sir. All Arabs following Muhammad's example claim descent from Ishmael. So there's a distinction between the sons of Ham and the sons of Ishmael. The sons of Ham are Hamites, those are Nilotes. Nilotes. Okay. 
Hope everybody understand what I'm saying. Nilotic Hamites. The Arabs are total different race of people. Okay? From there, as I was saying, Arabs are not the ancient Egyptians nor Libyans, and, and the Caucasians are not the Jews, the children of Israel. Let's open up from there. Let's go to Deuteronomy 33, 29. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord. We're the ones saved by the Lord. People talking about they saved. Mm -mm. The only ones saved by the Lord are the Israelites, the 12 tribes. That's the prophecy right there. Read. The shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies. Thine what? Thine enemies, thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. Shall be found liars. We're going to uncover a lot of lies today. Go ahead. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Meaning we're going to rule them. We're going to dominate them. That's the prophecy right there. Okay. So give me Ezekiel 29. Ezekiel 29. Now this occurred during the time of Nebuchadnezzar. But I want y'all to see something in it. Let's start, who, uh, Yuri, let's start at verse 14. Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 14. And I will bring... Uh, start at 13, start at 13. Yes, sir. Verse 13. Yet thus saith the Lord God, at the end of 40 years will I gather the Egyptians from the people whither they were scattered. When Nebuchadnezzar smashed Egypt, the Egyptians, the true Egyptians, the sons and daughters of Ham, were scattered. But after 40 years, they came back to the land. Verse 14. And I will bring again the captivity of Egypt and will cause them to return into the land of Pathros. That's Egypt. Go ahead. Into the land of their habitation. And they shall be there a base kingdom. So God prophesied through Ezekiel that the Egyptians would be a base kingdom. Base is the root word of basement. You can get no lower. That's the bottom. That's the basement. Everybody understand that? So there would be a base kingdom. Go ahead. It shall be the basis of the kingdoms. It, it, ancient Egypt would be the basis of all kingdoms. Go ahead. Neither shall it exalt itself anymore above the nations. Because at one time, ancient Egypt was the world's superpower. The Lord said after this, after Nebuchadnezzar smote them, they would never rise again. Go ahead. For I will diminish them. I will diminish them. Go ahead. That they shall no more rule over the nations. Ancient Egypt. Can somebody tell a committed community this? That they, Egypt would no more rule over the nations. And Kemet, Kemet, Kemet is another word for Ham. That's all it is. When they say they're Kemet, that's Hamitic. Everybody understand that? It's the same word. Because in Hebrew, you pronounce it Ham. Okay. Yeah, that's them. That's them right there. Mm -hmm. That's what you call base. There it is. Hold tap, brother. Hold tap. Hold tap, my brother. Ashe, Ashe. <laughs> Officer Yuri, where we at? We just read verse 15. Read it again. It shall be the basis of the kingdoms. Neither shall it exalt itself any more above the nations. For I will diminish them, that they shall no more rule over the nations. Verse 16, it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel. This part we want to focus on, and it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel. Because when Nebuchadnezzar was going to come against us, our forefathers made a league, an agreement with Egypt to help us fight against ancient Babylon. And that got wiped out. We got wiped out. Egypt got wiped out. And the Lord had warned us through Jeremiah, do not make a league with Egypt. So when it says, and it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Egypt, I mean of Israel, because we are Israel, our people today, the small remnant of them, believe that Egypt is on the rise. Those ancient Egyptians, is no, they, you can't even find them today. They've all been scattered again. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Read on. 16 Which, again. Yes, sir. And it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel, which bringeth their iniquity to remembrance when they shall look after them. But 
they shall know that I am the Lord God. All right. So what happened in Egypt? What happened to those ancient Egyptians? Well, a couple of things. Egypt was conquered by the Muslim Arabs. Write this down in 641 A.D. Okay. Egypt was conquered by the Muslim Arabs in 641 A.D. Remember, Muhammad and um, Mah the so-called prophet Muhammad, he's not really a prophet, came 600 years after Christ. Everybody got that? Okay. And until the Ottoman Empire took over, Ottoman Empire took over in 1517. Those are the Turks. The Ottoman Empire are the Turks. They took over Egypt in 1517. And Turkish rule ended around 1952. When Gamal Abdel Abdul Nasser came to power. All right. Can we put the images that I sent you of the modern Egyptians? Yes. These are your modern Egyptians today, which are Arabs. These are Ishmaelites. These are not Hamites at all. Everybody understand that? Give me the next one with the Saudi prince. Right. Here's another one. They call him the Saudi prince. Give me the video uh, with Kevin Hart, please. Got one more? Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's them. Give me the uh, clip with Kevin Hart, please. Should be a link. Yep, that's it. Let's take a look. Hey, Alicia, we only go into the, f the first three minutes from zero to three minutes. That's all I want. I don't want the whole video. All right. Now, the American comedian Kevin Hart was supposed to be performing in Egypt as part of a regional tour, but his show has been cancelled reportedly over comments he made about the race of ancient Egyptians. Well, Emma Oliver is here with us in the studio to talk more about that. Uh, good to see you, Emma. Good and good um, you, it's not the first time, is it, uh, that Kevin Hart has been cancelled? What happened this time? So this time, uh, apparently, the, although the show was supposedly cancelled due to local logistical reasons, so the production company came out just a few days ago and stated that this was the reason that the show was canceled. But this came after Egyptians and local Arabs in Cairo took to social media criticizing Kevin Hart for promoting Afrocentrism. So what Afrocentrism is, is the movement seeking to promote uh, the history of black people played throughout history. Uh, to the, towards the creation of Western civilization. Um, so in the past, they kind of brought up on social media that in the past, Kevin Hart allegedly stated that we must teach children the true history of black Africans when they were kings in Egypt and questioned whether or not people remember that Africans were the kings in Egypt. Um, although the source of this claim is not uh, known, of the video of him stating this, um, but this is where the criticism began. So after that ro rose up on social media, um, they, believe, local Egyptians believe that he was per se blackwashing the ancient history of oh, Egypt and wiping away the rich Arab culture that Egypt has. Uh, so that may be the reason why it was canceled. But again, the production team is not stating they're, that this They're is not why. going for that at all. No. And of course, I, I, I've seen some analysts talk about how you, you can't take today's modern notions about race as we know them and, and apply them to ancient history and ethnicity uh, and all the rest of it. But, but what has been the response from his team then? They're just saying, no, nothing to do with it. So there hasn't been an actual statement from their team or Kevin Hart himself yet. Uh, again, there's no apology. He hasn't claimed that this is true. Um, but the local community has seemed kind of happy that this show was canceled. There was a hashtag back in December that was spiraling around social media that actually became one of the top trending hashtags in Cairo and in Egypt, um, claiming to, stating to boycott his show. Um, so after the cancellation, 
people took social media by storm and kind of were happy that it was ended, ending up being canceled. Um, but again, it's yet to hear from Hart or his team. Uh, or old Kevin that. Hart. He can't get a break in America or in yeah. Egypt, apparently. Um, yeah. Is he going to be performing in other countries in the region on yeah. this tour? Yes, exactly. Yeah, he is. Uh, so actually, last night, he performed in Abu Dhabi. This was his first time performing in Abu Dhabi in two, since 2016. Um, he is now flying to Bahrain, where he's performing tomorrow. And then after Bahrain, he's heading to Riyadh in Saudi Arabia to perform there. And well, already then. So you can't, they said he was attempting to blackwash history. I never heard that term, trying to blackwash history. Now we're gonna see if the ancient Egyptians were Arabs or were they Hamites the way the Bible says. Hey, give me that in Psalms, uh, is 105 or 106, where it says we sojourned in the land of Ham. Where's that at? 105, 23. Psalms, chapter 105, verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. So Egypt is the land of Ham, meaning the Hamites, the Nilotes, okay? Uh, IT, give me the first book. Yes. So here's a book published by um, Time Life magazine entitled Ancient Egypt. Let's go inside the book. All right. So these are some monuments that they called monuments and God kings because the pharaohs were alleged to be gods on earth. Give me the next one. All right. Here you have some slaves in Egypt. These are your slaves. I want you to look at the color of the slaves doing the rowing. Give me the next one. Here are some slave women weeping for Pharaoh with wigs on. Because remember, in Egypt was accustomed to shave your head. Okay, so they were weeping in Egypt. Hmm. I want you to notice the complexions of the people. Let's go to the next one. Here is Pharaoh, sport for the family. Pharaoh's out, his wife is uh, at his leg, their child. I want y'all to notice the complexion of the people, the Egyptians. It sure don't look like those Arabs that we just saw on the screen. Give me the next one. Okay, here's some more. Hey, can we zoom in on the left, the writing there on the left? Yes, can we zoom in on that? Yuri, can you see that? Yes, sir. Can you zoom out just a little bit? Yes, sir. Fashionable ladies offer whiffs of fragrant lotus blossoms to one another as a slave girl passes around a dish of refreshments. Ladies were, usu ladies were usually, though not always, seated apart from the men on the opposite side of the large banquet room. All right, let's pull back out. Let me take a look at it. So y'all see the slave girl right there on the left handing out the perfume thing to the ladies. Okay, they all look, right, they all look similar in complexion to me. Okay, let's go down to the bottom one. Is there any writing next to that, bottom left? Yes, sir. Vineyard workers pluck and tread grapes on a noble's estate, estate pre preparing the fine wines that a lord served at his banquets. Egyptian wines were labeled with date, vineyard, and variety for the convenience of I can't see that. Tax Ass assessors. Tax assessors, not connoisseurs. So these are, when it says uh, workers, meaning those are slaves. That's what I mean. The slaves were working the vineyard for a nobleman in Egypt. Pull back out so we can take a look. Don't look, still don't look like them Arabs or Caucasians. Don't look like them to me. Okay, let's give me the next one. Here's another book entitled Egypt, Land of the Pharaohs. Let's go inside. We saw that one. All right, can we, zoom, can we get the writing on the left, bottom left? Alicia, can we zoom in? 
in an effort to save the Valley of the Queen's most beautiful tomb, that of Queen Nefertari, an Italian team of restorers works on the flaking murals. Begun in 1986, the six-year endeavor was sponsored by the Egyptian Antiquities Organization and the J. Paul Getty Conservation Institute. All right, so this is inside the tomb of Queen, pull out, of Queen Nefertari. Look at Queen Nefertari right there. She had brown complexion. Do y'all see that? Don't look like them Arabs to me. Okay. And y'all see the white woman there? These are Italians. Down in there. Right. Yeah. She, <laughs> Give me the next one. Yeah, olives come in two colors. Brown, dark brown and black. Let's see the writing above the chair. Zoom into the writing above the chair, please. Read that. Tutankhamun's throne, made of wood sheathed in gold foil. Tutankhamun was the boy king. Go ahead. The young pharaoh. Go ahead. Depicts the queen anointing the king with perfumed ointment. Thieves are thought to have wrenched off and taken the grill work that once graced the legs. They would have melted down the foil to sell. Okay. So raise it up. Can we zoom in on the picture? Y'all can see the complexion of the people. Dark brown. Dark brown people in Egypt. Okay, let's get to the next one, please. Whoa, let's get to writing on the bottom right. The gilded wooden statue at left is one of two Ka figures of Tutankhamun. That's the boy king. Mm -hmm. Made life-size. It is believed that the statues were intended as hiding places for sacred religious texts but cavities discovered under the kilts, presumably carved to hold the papyri, were empty. The photo above shows Carter and his associate A.R. Callender carefully wrapping one of the figures in February 1923. Okay, let's take a look at Tutankhamun. Do y'all see how black Tutankhamun is? Okay, and look at them, uh, the Edomites are wrapping it up. These, they, they're grave robbers. That's what these Edomites are. Okay. I want you to see how black Tutankhamun was done. You can't get an Arab out of that. Cannot get an Arab out of that. Give me the next one. Let's get the writing at the bottom. Dramatic testimony to the assistance provided by computers in solving the jigsaw puzzle of the Talatat. This montage of a portion of wall in Akhenaten's temple was assembled from matches made between keyed ph photographs of miscellaneous stones. The scene, a depiction of temple life, shows workers carrying jars, milling grain, and feeding cattle. Let's look at it. Okay, so it's like a jigsaw puzzle. They're trying to put it together. But y'all can see the complexion of the people. Brown. Okay. Let's go to the next one, please. Let's read that. The eerie yet commanding face of the heretical pharaoh Akhenaten forms the upper part of a colossal sandstone statue unearthed at the site of the king's temple to the sun god at Karnak. The exaggerated facial features reflect the revolutionary art style favored by the pharaoh. Let's take a look at That's Akhenaten right there. Okay, that's king, uh, the pharaoh known as Akhenaten. Let's go to the next one. All right, now this is going to be very important. Okay, let's read that right there. In 1822, the year this portrait was painted, 31-year-old Jean-Francois Champollion broke the code of Egyptian hieroglyphs when he deciphered the names of the king, kings Ramses and Thutmose above. The first modern Egyptologist and the father of Egyptian linguistics, Champollion pursued a brilliant but short career terminated by his death at the age of 41. So somebody tell a comedic community, everything they know about Egypt from the hieroglyphs comes from this white man, uh, Jean, Jean-Francois Champollion. With a bomb. 
What the hell is that? A cowbell. Wow. Greenleaf. River. Let's put that back on the screen right there. Wow. So this is who translated all the hieroglyphs for the comedic community. The white man. The white man. Let's go to the next one. Let's get to writing. Designer of King Joseph's Step Pyramid above far right, Imhotep left is memorialized in bronze. Coming more than 4,000 years after its construction, the English archaeologist Walter Emery, seen here, trailed by a chair-bearing helper, would scour the sands of Saqqara, site of the pyramid, searching unsuccessfully for the still-hidden resting place of the architect, whose fame rivals that of his powerful patron. What was his name? King. You got uh, Walter Emery. King Joseph. Joseph. Yes, sir. I want now. Let's take a look at him. I want y'all to t zoom in on him. Zoom in on him. I want y'all to take a look. That don't look Arab to me. That Jeff definitely does not look Arab to me. Okay, everybody see that, right? All right, let's go to the next one. All right, let's look at that. Let's can we read the bottom? So we got, okay. All right, let's take a look. All right, y'all can see the slaves, in, uh, ro the slaves in Egypt rowed the boat. The Egyptian nobles did not row themselves. Everybody understand that? That's how slavery works. The slave does all the work like the ones in the box did. There was a cut, carvings, wooden carvings of Egyptians and the Egyptian slaves. They look similar br dark brown complexion to me. No Arabs there. Okay. Let's go to the next one. All right, here's Ramses II, Magnificence on the Nile. Let's go inside. Let's get the writing bottom. The two cartouches in script inked on this cedar coffin lid state that it belongs to Ramses II. So the cedar coffin, that's meaning it's made of wood. Go ahead. The coffin, dating from the 18th dynasty, was a substitute for the one in which the pharaoh was entombed. The valuable original was probably stolen by grave robbers. It wasn't probably stolen. They know they stole it. So now this is called a coffin. Can y'all get me that in somebody is in Genesis? It might be chapter 50, where it tells you what Joseph was put in. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Give me that. Genesis chapter 50. Verse 26. Yeah. Verse 26. Genesis chapter 50, verse 26. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Right. He was put in a coffin in Egypt. So put it back on the screen so we know what it looks like. So when you read about the coffins in the Bible, this is what it's talking about, okay? This is what the Egyptians, this is where America, by the way, gets it from. America didn't come up with the concept of a coffin. They got it from ancient Egypt. Embalming that America does, they got it from ancient Egypt. That is not the Israelite custom. That's what was done in ancient Egypt. All righty then. Uh, was there any more? Give me more images. What was next? Okay. Now, what I, the reason I want you to take a look at this, give me, uh, find me the scripture, I believe it's Psalm 64, but they do a diligent search. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Get me that one. 64 and verse 6. Psalms chapter 64 and verse 6. They search out iniquities. The white man searches out iniquities. They are archaeologists. Go ahead. They accomplish a diligent search. They accomplish a diligent search. When they dig, they dig. And if it takes months, it takes years. They discover whole civilizations. Go ahead. Both the inward thought of every one of them 
And the heart is deep. And they get paid hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to do these archaeological digs. Okay, let's get the next one. This is some more inside the tombs. Many of these tombs was in the midst of in sand, underground. They had to dig all this stuff up and find it and search out the iniquities of ancient Egypt. And many of the iniquities, the sins that they discovered in Egypt, they incorporated here in the United States of America. Give me the next one. Okay. This was the Valley of the Kings. Give me the next one. Pharaoh larger than life. That's an obelisk that they have here in America as well. Give me the next one. Uh, give me the writing right there under the picture. Hidden behind a column to the left is the central chapel of the chief god Amon. Statues of divinities probably stood in the niches to either side. The reliefs are considered among Egypt's most beautiful. The one above shows Iusis, partner of Atum, the creator god, bestowing the breath of life on Seti. In the shrine of Isis, wife and sister of Osiris, Seti offers the goddess two bowls of wine. For the temple decorations, Seti used raised relief, more refined and more difficult to execute than the incised carving that was employed by Ramses following his father's death. This is also the three trinity there. That's where they get the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost from. That's where they pull that from. Okay, pull out. All right. I want y'all to look at them. These are black people. Everybody see that? Okay, let's get the next one. More archaeological digs. This is what we were reading about in Psalm 64. This is what they do. Give me the next one. All right. Now, they, this is one of the uh, mummies that came out of the coffins. Give me the next one. Okay. So this is one of the mummies that they took out of the tombs. Okay. Uh, Elisha. I just sent you something from the book called Americana. You see it? It's, it's two, two pictures. Let's take a look at them. We're going to take a look. We are going to take a look. So I need you to pay very close attention. And we're going to come back to this, the image of the mummy in a moment, but I did want to show you this. All right. We almost there, Alicia? All right. Put that on the screen. The Encyclopedia Americana, complete in 30 volumes. Let's go inside the book. Published between 1829 and 1954. Let's go inside. Let's zoom in at the bottom. Where's Yuri? Do you see where it says slavery? Yes, sir. Slavery was due to raids of Arabs and Hamites on Negro communities. Now I get a bomb. This this is how our people became Muslims. Because of the Arabs and Hamites. What I want you to see also, the Arabs and Hamites are two different races. They are not the, sl they are not the same. All right, uh, Alicia, let's go back to the mummy. Okay, so in this picture here that you're seeing, can you see the wording, Yuri? Yes, sir. Can you zoom in on the, the wording? A sample of Daedalia bienis, a destructive fungus found growing on the left side of Ramsey's back, near right, thrives in a petri dish far right. So this is a mummy of Ramsey's, all right? So now, Kevin Hart said that black people, now he's referring to Negroes, talking about us, were the kings of Egypt. No. No, 
the ancient Egyptian pharaohs were black. They were Hamites, Nilotes, but they were not the Negroes. Let's go into the next book now, the black image. If y'all get a chance, share this with Kevin Hart so he can take a look and glean something. Read that, Yuri. The Black Image in the White Mind by George M. Fredrickson. The Debate on Afro-American Character and Destiny, 1817 to 1914. Let's take a look on the inside of the book. Let's start to highlight at the bottom. In the 1840s, Morton collaborated with George R. Glidden, an Egyptologist, who provided him with mummy heads and information about the, Read, the, the racial. racial significance of Egyptian tomb inscriptions. In Crania Egyptica, published in 1844. Crania means the skull, study of the skulls. Go ahead. Morton pointed out that both cranial and archaeological evidence showed that the Egyptians were not Negroes. As abolitionists and colonizationists, colon, mm -hmm. colon, mm -hmm. colonizationists had maintained. Watch this. And that, in fact, blacks had been relegated to the same servile position in ancient Egypt as in modern America. So what are they saying? That, who are they saying we are? The Israelites. Because it was the Israelites as slaves in ancient Egypt. It's the Israelite slavery here in America. The scholars know that. The scholars know that. Give me Genesis 15, 13. Come on. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Referring to Egypt, go ahead. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. So we would be afflicted in Egypt for 400 years. Get Exodus chapter 1 and verse 8. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt. This new king, write this down, is... I mm, don't want to say that. The new dynasty. Write that down. New dynasty. New dynasty. Okay, that's what it's referring to. Read it again. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Write this down. Amos, A-H-M-O-S-E, the first. Amos, the first. Read. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Meaning enslave us. That's what that's deal wisely meant. Go ahead. Lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies. They didn't want us to join with their enemies to overthrow them. Go ahead. And fight against us. Go ahead. And so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters, to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Python and Ramses. Ramses was the Pharaoh we made the Exodus from under. Ramses the second, write that down. Get? But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. We don't die, we multiply. Go ahead. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Rigor, it's going into slavery. Go ahead. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Give me the book of Judith in the Apocrypha. The book of Judith, chapter 5. And we want verse 11. Judith chapter 5 verse 11 therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them and brought them low with laboring in brick and made them slaves y'all see that they made us slaves in case exodus wasn't clear for you Judith makes it clear okay so from there give me the next book uh Elisha 
I want pictorial. You can X out of that. Right there. All right, here's the next book, Pictorial History of Israel, by Jacob A. Rubin and Meyer Barkai. These are Amalek. So-called Jewish people put this book together. Let's go to the inside the book. Notice what it says at the top. Unto thy sea. Let's get the writing. Y'all can see the image. Yeah, lower it just a little bit. Lower it. Read the writing, Yuri. This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt. So it depicts Israel's bondage in Egypt. Look at Israel. These are not Arabs or Caucasians. Go ahead. Ba was found in the Theban tomb of Rechmeyer, governor and vizier at the time of Thutmose the Third. Remember, we were in the Egypt 400 years. There were several dynasties we were there. Go ahead. About 1450 BCE. Uh-huh. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. Exodus 1, 13 and 14. This further proves that the scholars know that the ancient Israelites were black people. From there, give me Acts 7, 32. Acts 7, verse 32. Acts chapter 7, verse 32. Saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses... Start of 31. Start of 31. So. Yes, sir. Verse 31. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him. Referring to the burning bush. Go ahead. Saying, I am the, Lord, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Meaning don't track none of that Egyptian philosophies up here. Go ahead. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. Remember, Egypt is in Africa. Go ahead. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out. After that, he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. From there, give me the next book, Officer Elisha. Next book, the dictionary. Right, Harper's Bible Dictionary. Let's go inside Harper's Bible Dictionary. Let's read the highlighted areas at the very bottom. 1, 2A, 2B. Fresco paintings from the Western Wall of the 3rd Century A.D. Synagogue at Dura Europus, a city in the Euphrates River in Syria. Jump over to the next highlight. Depict depicts Moses three two B, times. 2B. Two 2B two depicts Moses three times, from far right to left. Moses strides toward the Red Sea with staff upraised, leading the ancient Israelites out of Egypt. Leading the ancient Israelites out of Egypt. Now, I want y'all to take a look at Moses. I want you yeah, that one right there. Look at the afros on Moses. He's depicted three times. This is one right there. Two is the next one with his staff raised up. You got the Israelites on the side, left, and the Egyptians are being drowned in the Red Sea on the right. Get to the, on the far right. Right, those are the Egyptians over there being drowned. Let's raise it up. I mean, lower it, yes. So this is when they had the tab Israel set up the tabernacle. Lower it. Lower it, yeah. You got Aaron right there. You got the menorah, the seven-branch menorah. So notice it said Moses 3. Oh, look at the hand of God. Go back to the bottom one. Can you zoom in? I want you all to see the hand of God right there. No, yeah, black. Black hands that look like Moses, that look like the Israelites. Give me the next image of Moses, the next picture, I believe. Because it said Moses three times. Go over to the next image. Right, that's the third image right there. That's Moses again, a black man. Okay, so what have we showed you thus far is that the ancient Egyptians were black, 
as well as the ancient Israelites, were black. Everybody understand that? Although they were black, they were two different races. The Egyptians are Hamites. Those were the Nilotes. The Israelites are Shemites. That's who we are. Everybody understand that? All right. Let's get to, give me Exodus 2.17, please. Exodus chapter 2, verse 17. Exodus chapter 2, verse 17. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. So they thought Moses was an Egyptian. Go ahead. Why? Because they look similar. Go ahead. And also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. Give me Acts 21, 37. So they mistook Moses for an Egyptian. Okay, watch this. Acts 21, 37. Acts chapter 21, verse 37. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee, who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian? So they mistook Paul, the apostle Paul, for a Hamite, an Egyptian. Go ahead. Which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers. Let's see Paul's response. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew. Paul said, I'm a Jew. I'm not an African. I'm not a Hamite. I'm not Egyptian. Go ahead. Of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. So Tarsus is located in Turkey. Paul was born in Turkey. When it says Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, and when it says a citizen of no mean city, meaning he didn't come from the ghetto. Paul did not come from the hood. He came from well-to-do family. Go ahead. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. So Moses was an Israelite mistaken for an Egyptian. Paul was an Israelite mistaken for an Egyptian. Give me the next image of Amalek. Yuri, I mean, uh, Alicia. Yeah, they're reading. It should be, it's in order. I, I send everything in order. They're reading the Torah. Right there. How in the hell you going to look at them and mistake them for ancient Egyptians? Impossible. Impossible. Totally impossible. They are frauds. Hey, is it, give me the fraud scripture, Revelation 2 9. That's going to feel like reading it. You can read it, leave that right there. No, no, no. Put the, put the back on the screen. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 2. No, no. Put me on the screen now for this first part. Go ahead, go ahead. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Come on. I know thy works. That's right. We worked hard. Go ahead. And tribulation. And we catch hell in this country and in Smyrna. Go ahead. And poverty. And we are impoverished people because we're under Edomite domination. Go ahead. But thou art rich. But all the promises in the Bible pertain to our people, our 12 tribes. Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy. Stop. Put it back on the screen. Read that again. And I know the blasphemy Come on. of them which say they are Jews and are not. And are not. Well, who are they if they ain't the Jews? But are the synagogue of Satan. Jesus Christ called him the devil, the Bible speaks of. These ain't our words. We didn't write this. We didn't make this up. Hey, give me the other scripture, Yuri, the other fraud scripture, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 2.16. Here's the, next, here's the precept that goes with that. Wisdom with, of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 16. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 16. Well, we, get me off the screen. Get me off the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This pertains to them. Go ahead. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. See that? These people are counterfeits, fakes, frauds. Phony! He, he, he abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. We abstain from their ways as from filthiness. Why? Because they don't do nothing but study the Talmud and lie, lie, lie. Go ahead. He pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed. Our end is going to be blessed. Go ahead. And maketh his boast that God is his father. God is our father. 
Everybody understand that? All right. That's some wisdom in that stuff right there. Don't be ashamed of the word of God. We didn't write this. Okay. Christ said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father and the angels, which are in heaven. Okay. Give me Proverbs 9. I want verse 1. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1. Wisdom hath builded her house. Wisdom. This Bible, wisdom hath builded her house. Go ahead. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath hewed out her seven pillars. She hath hewed out her seven pillars. Um, hey, so what are the seven pillars? Obadiah, what are the seven pillars? Can I? What are the seven pillars? Little can I? Okay, give me Isaiah 11 and verse 2. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. Read slow. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So the first pillar deals with the Spirit of the Lord. That's that Holy Spirit. Write that down. Read. The Spirit of wisdom. The Spirit of wisdom is the second pillar pillar that Christ had. He's remember before we go on, remember, I believe it's first Corinthians one twenty four. Is it right? Yuri, give me that real quick. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 24. Is that right? I'm not looking at it about Christ, the spirit, the wisdom of God. 21. Good. 121. Verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. No. 24. Read. I had it right the first time. Come on. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. That's what I wanted. Christ is the wisdom of God. So we're talking about the seven pillars of wisdom. Now, Isaiah 11 talks about Christ. Read verse 2 again, Yuri. Yes, sir. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So that's pillar number one, the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. The spirit of wisdom. Wisdom, that's pillar number two. And understanding. That's number three. The spirit of counsel. That's number four. And might. That's number five. The spirit of knowledge. That's number six. And of the fear of the Lord. That's number seven. Those are the seven pillars of wisdom. And it starts off, you must have the Holy Spirit on you. Everybody understand that? All right. Well, all righty then. What, you lost? You lost? Okay, read it again, Yuri, because uh, we need some help up here. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That's the Holy Spirit, right? That's pillar number one. Go ahead. The Spirit of wisdom. That's the second pillar, wisdom. Go ahead. And understanding. That's the next pillar. That's the third pillar. Go ahead. The spirit of counsel. Counsel is the fourth pillar. And might. That's the fifth pillar. The spirit of knowledge. That's the sixth pillar. And of the fear of the Lord. That's the seventh pillar. Oh, now go back to Proverbs 9 and 1. Let's read it one more again. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 1. Wisdom hath built her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. So those are the seven attributes all of us must attain to. Wherever we've fallen short, we better pray for that, meditate, and study to attain that. Pray to the Lord that he endow us with those seven pillars of wisdom. Everybody understand that? All right, from there, from there. Give me Romans 9, and let's start at verse 1. Romans chapter 9 and verse 1. I say the truth in Christ. Paul says, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. He said, I'm not lying at all. Go ahead. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. He said, the Holy Ghost is on me. That's who's speaking through me. That's what Paul is saying. Go ahead. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Uh -huh. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren my kinsmen according to the flesh. So when he says, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, 
my kinsman according to the flesh. He's saying, I wish I could take on all the curses of Deuteronomy 28 on me so that my brothers, my kinsmen wouldn't have to go through this. Read it again. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. So now the question is, who is Paul's brethren, his kinsmen according to the flesh? See, Christians like to run from that word, the flesh. He's going to break it down for us. Go ahead. Who are Israelites? The Israelites are Paul's kinsmen according to the flesh. Not all nations on the planet. Go ahead. To whom pertaineth? That word pertaineth means to whom belongeth. To whom belongeth what? The adoption. The adoption. Let's pause there. The adoption. What is the adoption? Give me Galatians 4 verse 4. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son. God sent forth his son. Made of a woman. Made of a woman. Made under the law. Made under the law. Read. To redeem them. To redeem them. That were under the law. That's not all nations on the planet earth. All nations were not under the law of God. He gave the law to Moses, who gave it to the 12 tribes of Israel. Read five again. To redeem them that were under the law. That we that might receive. That we. That we. That we. That we might receive the adoption of sons. So that only pertains to the 12 tribes of Israel. Does everybody understand that? Go on back to Romans 9 and verse 4 one more time. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 9 verse 4. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory? What is the glory? Give me Psalms 149 and verse 5. What is the glory talking about? Psalms. Chapter 149 and verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Hey, read. What do I want first? Read 2, then jump down to 5. Yes, sir. Verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Why is he saying that? Why is David saying that? Because we have not been joyful in our king. The way we're joyful in our king is by keeping his laws, his commandments, his high holy days. But our people have been joyful in Christmas, in Kwanzaa, in Ramadan. Read it again. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Jump down to five. Verse five. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. So what is glory? The kingdom of heaven. Read. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Why? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. So glory is the kingdom of heaven. Everybody understand that? Let's go back to Romans 9, verse 4, one more time. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants? And the covenants. Covenants. Give me that in Hebrews 8, verse 8. The covenants. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them. For finding fault with the Israelites. He saith, behold. The days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. With the house of Israel. And with the house of Judah. And with the house of Judah. Why? Because we were split into two kingdoms. Read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Not according to that covenant I made with their fathers that have animal sacrifice. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. In the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Mm hmm because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. When it says, I regarded them not, meaning we went into slavery for breaking God's first covenant. Everybody understand that? What verse was that, Yuri? That was verse 9. Go ahead. Verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. So this is the new covenant. Go ahead. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And write them in their hearts. So now let's go on back to Romans 9. Romans chapter 9 verse 4. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants 
and the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. Give me Psalm 78, verse 5, please. Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. You know, the churches hate Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9 gives you the purpose, God's plan, just like Daniel 7. Go ahead. For he established a testimony in Jacob. He established a testimony in Jacob. And appointed a law in Israel. And appointed a law in Israel. The law was not for all nations on the planet Earth. Everybody understand that? Let's go on back to Romans 9. Romans chapter 9 verse 4. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God. The service of God, give me that in Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 55, explains who, are the, who gave the service unto God. The servants, God's servants. Who is it? Let's see. Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 55. For unto me... The children of Israel are servants. Y'all see that for unto me, the children of Israel are servants. Not all nations or the planet earth are the servants to God. Let's go back to Romans 9. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. And the promises. And the promises. Give me that. Acts 13. 23. Acts chapter 13, verse 23. Acts chapter 13, verse 23. Of this man's seed. Of this man's seed, of David's seed, of David's sperm. Hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Do y'all see that? So the promises is made to Israel, not all nations on the planet Earth. Okay, let's go on back to Romans 9. Yes, sir. And for one more time, I want us to marinate. Who are Israelites mm -hmm. to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Whose are the fathers? Whose are the fathers of this records called the Bible? Give me that in um, Sirach chapter 1. Sirach. Ecclesiasticus, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1 and verse 1. Let me look at it first. Mm, let's give me the... Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Mm, 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 mm. The prologue goes into it. Give me Isaiah 34, 6. It'll be quicker and easier. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None of the promises in the Bible shall fail. Go ahead. None shall want her mate. You can't mate the Bible with no other book. Watch this. For my mouth, it hath commanded. God's mouth commanded the writings of this record. It's called the Bible. Go ahead. And his spirit, it hath gathered them. God's spirit gathered, collected these writings together. Go ahead. And he, and he hath cast the lot for them. And he cast lots for the prophets. Go ahead. And his hand hath divided it unto them by line. And his hand has divided the line, the writings of the Bible unto them by line. Meaning Jeremiah, for example, got a lot. Ezekiel got a lot. Obadiah got one chapter. Jude got one chapter. It was divided unto them by line. Go ahead. They shall possess it forever. We're going to possess the book and the land forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. Shall we dwell in a land? Okay, from there, go back to Romans 9, and we're in verse 5. Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. God blessed forever. Amen. Give me that in uh, Acts 2.22, please. Notice what it said. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning 
the flesh Christ came. When y'all on the street breaking this down, don't just run by that. Don't let the, the, the dumb Christian run by that. Because they go, spiritual Israel, spirituals. Mm. It says, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came. You got to stress that. You got to, don't, we ain't going past this till you acknowledge that. Okay. Give me Acts 2, 22. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Now jump to 30. Verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet. Therefore, being a prophet, referring to King David. Go ahead. And knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him. That of the fruit of his loins. The fruit, you gotta, you gotta, Paul, you gotta slow it down there. Of the fruit of his loins. His loins is making reference to his penis. Of the fruit is what comes out of his penis. Go ahead. That of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh. And in case you doubt it, it says according to the flesh, not spiritual. According to the flesh. Go ahead. He would raise up Christ. To sit on his throne. There's no immaculate conception. There's no virgin birth at all. Everybody understand that? So when you're on the street, you want to go by, you want to read verses like this slow. Because our people are slow. They got Christian, Christianity is worse than crack. It has drugged our entire nation of people. Okay, let's go on back to Romans 9. Romans. We we have in verse, verse 6 now? Yes, sir. Romans chapter 9, verse 6. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect. Right. Not as though the word of God has taken none effect because the word of God is taking effect. Did we go into slavery? Were our families destroyed and decimated? Did we go on slavery on ships? Are there earthquakes in diverse places? Pestilence? Wars and rumors of wars? So the Bible is taking effect. Read it again. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. They are not all Israel which are of Israel. What does that mean? All Israelites are not going to repent. I'm going to prove it. Give me 1 Maccabees 11.21. 1 Maccabees chapter 11 and verse 21. They are not all Israel which are of Israel, meaning all the Israelites are not going to repent. First Maccabees chapter 11, verse 21. Then certain ungodly persons who hated their own people. Do y'all see that? Certain ungodly persons who hated their own people. Those are your Uncle Ruckus. Those are your, what was that guy called in Django? Stephen, Snowflake, Stephen. Yeah, people like that. And believe me, they, they are around today. Some of them are your church ministers. Some of them are your congressmen, your assemblymen. Okay. Let's go, go on. Give me the next one, James 4 and 4. They are not all Israel, which are of Israel. I'm giving you explanations now. James chapter 4 and verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Is hatred with God. Go ahead. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world. Like we read in Maccabees. Whosoever will be a friend of the world. You want to be a friend with the Greeks, the Romans, America? Go ahead. Is the enemy of God. Is the enemy of God. Everybody see that? So they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. From there, give me Acts 13, 45. Here's some more examples. Acts chapter 13, verse 45. But when the Jews that but when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. They saw the multitudes of people who wanted to repent. They were filled with envy. The root of envy is hatred. Go ahead. And spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. That's what we see today on the street. We'll be, be out, you'll be out there teaching. Here come a Christian. To, out of nowhere to contradict and blaspheme everything you bring it out. Envy. Hatred. Give me Matthew 8.11. Matthew 
Right. And before you brothers got on the street, that damn Christian wasn't teaching a damn thing. But he saw you get in the crowd. Oh, I got to say something. Give me that Matthew 8, verse 11, please. Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. And I say unto you. And I say unto you. That many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. That's the brothers and sisters that repent. Legitimately repent. Go ahead. But the children of the kingdom. But the children of the kingdom, those scribes, those Pharisees, those religious men and women. Go ahead. Shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because they never wanted to accept Christ as Savior and keep the commandments. They never wanted that. It was true back then and it's true today. Go back to Romans 9 and 6. Romans chapter 9 verse 6. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Meaning that not all Israel will not repent. Go ahead. Neither. Because they are the seed of Abraham. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? Are they all children, meaning children of God? Read it again. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? Just because you come from Abraham's lineage does not make you children of God. Give me uh, the image, Elisha. Yeah, y'all could have put up Snowflake when I was talking. I don't be looking up at the screen. Put that up. Read that again, Yuri. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? Stop. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Remember, Abraham had children with Hagar or a son with Hagar, as we see here. Hagar and her son. Who remembers the son's name? It was Ishmael. It was Ishmael. Give me, here's the precept. Genesis 16, 16. Neither because they had a seed of Abraham are they all children of God. Genesis 16, 16. Genesis chapter 16, verse 16. And Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. So can you put it back on the screen, please? Read it again. You start at 15. Yes, sir. And Hagar bare Abram a son. And Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. Come on. And Abram was fourscore and six years old. He was 86 years old. When Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. When Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. Let's go back to Romans 9. Romans. You were in verse 7. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 9, verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but... In Isaac shall thy seed be called. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Give me the next image. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Leave it on the screen. Give me Genesis 21 verse 3. Genesis chapter 21 and verse 3. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. So Isaac was born to Abraham and Sarah. Let's go on back to Romans 9. Romans chapter 9 verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But that wasn't it. Abraham had more kids after that. Give me Genesis 25. And put the next image up. Yes, put that on the screen. Let's read Genesis 25 verse 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 1. Yes. Then again. Abraham took a wife. This is after Sarah died. After Sarah died, Abraham married a younger woman named Keturah. How do you know she was younger? It's going to tell you what she did. Go ahead. And her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimran and Jokshan and Medan and Midian and Ishbak and Shua. Six sons. Keturah, Keturah bore Abraham six sons. Sons. Everybody see that? So, let's go on back to Romans 9 now. Romans 9 and 7, one more again. Yes, sir. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham. Because Abraham had Ishmael and he had six sons by Keturah. Read it again. Neither, 
Because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? Meaning they're not all children of God. Go ahead. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Give me that in Genesis 21, 12. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Here's the prophecy. Genesis 21, verse 12. Genesis chapter 21, verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad. Because of Ishmael. Don't worry about Ishmael, the Lord said. Go ahead. And because of the and because of thy bondwoman. Because of Hagar. Don't be worried about them. Go ahead. And all that Sarah has said unto thee. And everything thee, your wife Sarah said to you. Go ahead. Hearken unto her voice. Listen to what Sarah said. Because remember, Sarah said, that uh, bond boy ain't going to be heir with my son. Now, it was a heated moment. But Sarah, although she was angry, the spirit was on her. So the Lord said to Abraham, Abraham, read that part again. Yes, sir. And... In all that Sarah have said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Y'all see that? The Lord had to remind him, said, listen, what Sarah said, you might be mad at her. But what she said was of me. It was correct. Isaac's the chosen seed. Okay? From there, give me Isaiah 48 and 12. Isaiah 48 verse 12. Isaiah. Chapter 48, verse 12. Hearken unto Wait, me. Wait, slow down, slow down. Yes, sir. Because I still hear pages flipping. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 12. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel, my call. Mm. You I am Israel and Israel, my what, brothers? Called. Go ahead. I am he. I am the first. I also in the last. Let's go on back to Romans 9 and 7 again. Now we got our thought together. Romans chapter 9 verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. So the Lord don't care because Abraham had a lot of kids. Now I'm not calling all of them kids Abraham had. Those seven kids, six from Keturah and one from Hagar. I'm not calling them. Go ahead. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. I'm calling that one that Sarah had. That's the boy I'm calling. I'm dealing with him. Go ahead. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. Now he's expanding the thought now. Neither because, read that part again. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. They which are the children of the flesh, meaning all the other nations. All the other nations. Go ahead. These are not. These are not the children of God. The children of God. So you got to read that slow on the street because Christians say everybody is the children of God. Read it again, Officer Yuri. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. Meaning all the other nations. These are not the children of God. Can I get a thank you? These are not the children of God. Give me that in Isaiah 40 and 17. Here's the precept to verify, to prove that. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. Let's start at verse 15. Verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. Meaning that a drop, if you're walking around with a bucket of water and a drop falls out, do you get upset? No, a, a drop fell out. You don't give a damn about that drop. God's comparing the nations to that drop that falls from a bucket. Did everybody see that? Go ahead. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small Dust of the balance. How much does dust, small, not any dust, small dust. How much does small dust weigh on a balance of scales? Nothing. God saying these nations are nothing. Go ahead. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. Even the islands, he said, is very little. The people that inhabit these islands are nothing to me. Go ahead. In Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. In Lebanon, if they wanted to sacrifice to be God's people. He said it's not sufficient to burn. Go ahead. Nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. That's not enough. Go ahead. All nations before him are as nothing. Did he say that? All nations are as nothing to the most high God. Go ahead. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. And vanity meaning a waste of time. 
But you might be thinking right now, or you might be thinking, wait, isn't the Israelites included in that? No. Jump over to verse 1. Verse 1. 1 and 2. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. He's, God told Isaiah to comfort the Israelites. Go ahead. Saith your God. Uh-huh. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. I want you, uh, Isaiah, to speak comfortably to the Israelites. Go ahead. And cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. That time of war, is war, her warfare is accomplished. It's over. Go ahead. That her iniquity is pardoned. Her sin is forgiven. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, what are some of the comfortable words God says to tell us? Jump back to verse 15 and read it quick. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. That's comfortable words. That makes us feel good inside. Because at one time, you might think God's dealing with the other nations. They're on top. The Lord said, no, 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 don't worry. Your iniquity is forgiven. And I'm going to tell you something about these other nations. They're nothing. Every last, And that's Bible. People, give me a Bible. Well, we're giving you Bible. But that makes you feel uncomfortable now, huh? Because your church has never taught you that. Let's go on back to Romans 9. Where's in verse 8? Romans chapter 9 and verse 8. That is... They which are the children of the flesh. The other nations. These are not the children of God. These are not the children of God. These are not the children of God. Everybody see that? Read. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Who was that? Isaac. The children that came from Isaac. Read. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come. And Sarah shall have a son. So now he's going to break it down. In case you're still confused about the children of the promise. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. Give me Genesis 17, 19. Genesis 17, verse 19. Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. And God said... Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. You see that? So the everlasting covenant was with Isaac, Sarah's son, Isaac. Not all nations on the planet Earth, not the other children that Abraham had either. Does everybody see that? Let's go on back now. Read it again, verse 9. Yes, sir. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. Or even by, when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. Go ahead. For the children. Children meaning, oh, wait a minute. So Rebekah. And Isaac had more than one child. Read that again. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. So what is he talking about? Wait, give, give, give me Genesis 25. Let's find out. Genesis 25, let's start at verse 21. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 1. Then again, Abraham, 25, 21. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife uh -huh. because she was barren. Because Rebecca couldn't get pregnant. So Isaac prayed to the Lord. Go ahead. And the Lord was entreated of him. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And the children struggled, to struggled together within her. Children, plural, more than one. Go ahead. And she said, if it be so, if it be so, if I've been blessed by God, why am I thus? Why am I having this trouble in my bowels? Go ahead. In my and, stomach, my womb. Go ahead. And she went to inquire of the Lord. And she went to inquire of the Lord. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto her. And this is what the Lord said. Two nations are in thy womb. Two nations. Two na The word Genesis means 
what, brothers? Beginning. This is the beginning of two different nations. Read that again. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Uh -huh. And two manner of people. When it says two manner of people, it means two different types of people. Go ahead. Shall be separated. Shall be what? Separated. No, assimilated. Separated. Joined. Separated. Integrated. Separated. The Bible says these two nations would be separated. Go ahead. Shall be separated from thy bowels. Uh -huh. And the one people. And the one people. Shall be stronger than the other people. Me meaning able to endure great hardships. Go ahead. And the elder. And the elder child. Shall serve the younger. Is prophesied to be a slave to the other. Now that's talking about the kingdom on earth. That's what that prophecy going with. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled. Uh -huh. Behold, there were twins in her womb. Now we know that they're not identical twins because it said two manner of people shall be separated. Meaning two different types. So these were not identical twins. These were fraternal twins. Read. And the first Came out red. The first came out red, meaning the blood showed through his skin. Go ahead. All over. All over. Like in hairy garment. Like in hairy garment. And, they, and they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. The word Esau literally means wasted away. That's what Esau means. Read. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Go ahead. And his name was called Jacob. Go ahead. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. Wait a minute. It gave Esau's color, but it did not give Jacob's color. Because Jacob looked just like Isaac and Rebekah. Jacob looked just like all the people from Genesis chapter 2 and 7 all the way up. Everybody understand that? Everybody was melanated until this character, Esau, came on the scene. Read on. Verse 26. I'm sorry, verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. Give me the next image of Esau was a cunning hunter. Esau grew up and became a cunning, hu cunning hunter. There you go right there. Esau became, remember it said he was red all over like a hairy garment. He was a hunter, a cunning hunter. Give me the next image of Esau. Blow it up. Esau was a cunning hunter. Yeah, Game of Thrones. Come on. Esau was a cunning hunter. Was that the, was there more, one more? Esau was a cunning, blow it up, cunning hunter. Was that it on Esau? Okay, go read it again, Yuri. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Give me Jacob. Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Jacob was a plain man. Jacob was a, right there, yep. Jacob was a plain man Dwelling in tents. Read on. And Isaac loved Esau. And Isaac loved his firstborn. Go ahead. Because he did eat of his venison. Go ahead. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Rebekah loved Jacob. Go ahead. And Jacob sawed pottage. And Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field. Mm -hmm. And he was faint. And he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. He said that same red pottage with that same red meat in it. Why same? Because the same looked like him. Everybody see that? Read. For I am faint. For I am faint. Hey, give me the picture. You didn't, uh, Alicia, give me the, give me, go back to the images of Jacob and Esau. Because you didn't finish the, uh, yeah, right there. Put that on the screen. Right. Because this is an example of, I, I need y'all to stay with me. So Isaac and Rebecca had two fraternal twins. They looked totally different. One was black, one was so-called Caucasian looking. Now you might say to yourself, that's impossible. Well, there was a Nigerian couple. Give me the couple. There was a Nigerian couple, and he had one black boy and one albino looking boy. This is an example that they come from us. We don't come from Caucasians, they come from us. 
I hope y'all understand that. I hope y'all see that. Okay. Uh, where we at, uh, Yuri? We're in verse 30 still. Go ahead. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee. Go back to the one with the pottage, Elisha. I need you to stay on topic with us. Read again, Yuri. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. Because Jacob was making pottage, all right? He was, he was cooking. And Esau said, feed me with that same red food you got there in that pot, go ahead. For I am faint. Because I'm faint, I'm tired, I didn't catch nothing while I was out hunting. Go ahead. Therefore was his name called Edom. Edom means red. Edom, E-D-O-M means red. Therefore was his name called Edom. So in the Bible you will read his name as either Esau or Edom at various times. Go ahead. Was that it? Yes, this is verse 31. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Mm -hmm. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? Mm -hmm. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swear unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink. So, and that's, so that goes with the history. Let's go back to Romans 9 now. And we were in verse 10 again. Yes, sir. Verse 10. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done Hey, put the picture of the babies back up on the screen. That one, right? Mm -mm. Go ahead. Put that one back on the screen. Read again. Yes, sir. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. I want you to see that. For the children being not yet born, meaning before they were born, neither having done any good or evil. They didn't do anything good. They didn't do anything evil. Everybody understand that? This is before they were born. Go ahead. That the purpose of God according to election, might stand. Uh -huh. Meaning of, God was doing the choosing. Go ahead. Not of works. Not of works, not of anything either of those ch children would do. But of him that calleth. God was going to call one of those children to be his chosen. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. The elder boy is destined to be a slave to the younger boy. Go ahead. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Do y'all see that? That was done before they were born. It had nothing to do with Esau asking, uh, Jacob asking Esau to sell his birthright. God already chose Jacob and already hated Esau. That, read it again, Yuri, from verse 11. Yes, sir. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. Not of works. Not of works. Had nothing to do with them doing anything good or evil. But of him that calleth. It was of God's decision. I'm going to choose one to love. I'm going to choose one to hate. And he made his decision before they were born. Do y'all see that? Sure. Read on. It was said unto her. The elder shall serve the younger, mm -hmm. as it is written. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Where was that written at? Give me that in Malachi 1. So I need, when you brothers are teaching and you're bringing it out, it had nothing to do with uh, Esau selling his birth, birthright. It had nothing to do with it. God made the decision before they were born. I'm going to love Jacob and I'm going to hate Esau. That's it. I've made my decision. Everybody understand that? Don't let a Christian befuddle you, confuse you. Where are we at, Yuri? Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob. Yet I loved Jacob. And I hated Esau. And I hated Esau. That's some cold stuff right there. 
churches don't want to deal with it because then they don't, that's why they don't want you to identify Esau. You got some Israelite communities. They go, no, 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 that's not Esau. That's Japheth. They can come into the kingdom. They don't want to identify these demons as Esau. And that's who, exactly who the Caucasian man and woman is. Okay. Let's go on back, Yuri. Verse 13 again. We're going to start from 13. Yes, sir. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now listen, people, all y'all guys are filled with hate. No, it has nothing to do with us being filled with any kind of hatred. We're reading the Bible. We're going to tell you what thus saith the Lord. We're the prophets of the most high God. That's right. And our job is to tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Go ahead. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Is God mean-spirited, unrighteous because he hated Esau and loved Jacob? God forbid. Paul is explaining God's plan from Genesis to the end. That's what this whole chapter is about. Paul has given you a brief synopsis of what God's plan is all about. Read that again, Yuri. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Because somebody will say, that's not right for God to hate Esau. God made his decision. He's God and you're not. Go ahead. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Uh -huh. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. I'm going to have mercy on whom I'm going to have mercy. I'm going to have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Didn't the Lord say that to Moses? Yes, he did. Go ahead. So then it is not of him that will it. You can't. Esau can't will himself to be the people of God. He can't will himself to be the Israelites. He can't will himself to be the Jew. He can't will himself to be the Christian. Okay, read it again. So then it is not of him that will it, uh -huh. nor of him that runneth. Nor of him. You can't, you can run around the earth and set up church after church after church, synagogue after synagogue after synagogue, and say, I'm ye Yehudi, I'm a Christian, I'm the people of God. Read it again. Nor of him that runneth. Read it runneth. again, the whole verse. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God. That showeth mercy. It's God's decision who he's going to have mercy on. Give me that in Isaiah 46 and 10. Isaiah 46 verse 10. Let's go. Paul is explaining the whole plan of God to us. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning. What does God do? Declaring the end from the beginning. From the Genesis. God declared the end. From the beginning, God declared the end. Go ahead. And from ancient times. And from ancient times. The things that are not yet done. Uh-huh. Saying, my counsel shall stand. Saying, my counsel shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure. And I will do all, meaning I'm going to do what I want to do. Mankind, you have nothing to say. Everybody understand that? Was that it, Yuri? Yes, sir. Go back. Give me Isaiah 14 and 1, please. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. Do y'all see that? He said, I'm having mercy on Jacob. Why? Why does it say I will yet choose Jacob? Why? Because remember, we broke the covenant. We broke God's laws. But guess what? Because he had prophesied he would send a savior, he says what? Read it again, Yuri. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet and choose, will yet and will yet choose Israel mm -hmm. and set them in their own land. Go ahead. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Meaning the other nations shall be joined with us. Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Meaning they're going to obey us. Go ahead. And the people shall take them. We shall take them and bring them to their place. Come on. And the house of Israel. Shall possess shall them. Shall do what? Shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Hey, that's what we read in Genesis 25. The elder, what does it say? Shall, shall serve the younger. That's Isaiah 14, 1 to 3. We have yet to come to that. Everybody understand that? That's Bible. That's Bible. Let's go on back to Romans 9. Oh, there's more. Read. 
I flip one. Because I'm not looking at it. I'm trusting Yuri to just read the key points. Read the whole thing again, Yuri, because they say you're messing up over there. Yes, sir. Verse 2. And the people shall take them. Read the mercy part again. Verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. Don't y'all want that? We shall take them captives whose captives we were. Go ahead. And they shall rule over their oppressors. We're going to rule over our oppressors. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. That's what Christ said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Read it again, verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. And from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. We are waiting on that day. Everybody understand that? Yes, Let's go on back to Romans 9. Romans 9. And we are in verse, I want verse 15 one more again. Yes, sir. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. So why is Paul bringing that in? Because as it was true back then, the Lord had mercy on Israel in the captivity under Egypt. He's bringing it up to today's time. Okay. Who was Paul and them under? What race? What nation of people? Rome. Go ahead, read it again, Yuri. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. It's all his decision. Come on. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh. Now he's still talking about ancient Egypt. But he's, he's using it. Remember, I want y'all to peep this. When y'all breaking it down, why did he go from Jacob and Esau to Pharaoh, Moses and Pharaoh? He's comparing Jacob and Esau to Egypt, which, bringing up to Paul's time, was the Israelites under Roman domination. Everybody see that? He's doing a comparison. Read it again, Yuri. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. Pause. You want to pause there and say, did not God raise up Pharaoh to be the world's superpower? Who was the world's superpower during the time of Paul? Rome. Rome. Read it again, Yuri. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all so the now, earth. Uh, give, me that, give me that book right there. You put that on the screen. Even for the same purpose have I raised the raised two up. He raised up ancient Egypt as world superpower. He raised Rome up as world superpower. And guess what? Who's the world superpower today? The United States of America. So here's a book, Modern Judaism. Okay. Published what year was that, Yuri? I can't see the bottom. 1830. 1830. Let's go inside the book. Blow it up big. I want it to fill the screen. You can get me off. Go ahead. First, that the descendants of Esau, the sworn enemies of the descendants of Jacob, even to the end of the world. So the scholars know Esau would be an enemy to Jacob even to the end of the world. Go ahead. Were at first a small nation inhabiting Mount Seir. Uh -huh. Esau was a small nation inhabiting Mount Seir. Go ahead. In the adjacent country contiguous to the land of Canaan that they were easily confined within their own limits, as long as the Israelites enjoyed a great and formidable empire in Canaan. As long as we were thriving, Esau stayed in their place. Go ahead. But that after the powerful republic of the 12 tribes were destroyed by the Assyrians and Babylonians. But when Israel was destroyed by the Assyrian Empire and the Babylonian Empire, they, were, they wonderfully increased in numbers and strength. Esau, Edom, wonderfully increased in numbers and strength. Go ahead. Extended their dominion towards the west. They extended their dominion toward the west. Spread their colonies far and wide. Subjugated Italy. Founded Rome and the Roman Empire. As so Esau, Edom, 
the scholars know is Rome and the Roman Empire. Everybody see that? Read on. At length, entirely overturned the Jewish state. Rome overturned us in 70 AD. They destroyed us, Scott. Which had been restored after the termination of the Babylonian captivity. The second temple being destroyed by Titus Vespasian. And that in the present day, professing the religion of Jesus of Nazareth. See that part right there? In the present day. They're talking about today. Professing the religion of Jesus of Nazareth. That's why they call themselves Christians. That's what it's talking about. Read. Which they were the first of all nations to embrace. Uh -huh. They hold the dominion over all Europe. So Esau holds dominion over all Europe. That includes France, Germany. Give me some more. The Netherlands. Netherlands Spain. Spain, Portugal. The scholar said that's all Esau. You got is some Israelite camps can't understand that. They're still going with Japheth, Japheth. There's no Bible verse that says Japheth was so-called white or Caucasian. Ask, you got to challenge these Israelites. Show me in the Bible where Japheth and his descendants were white. They can't do it. So you know what you got to say next? Stop the blood clot lies. Stop the lies. Esau came with the change in complexion. Read on. They hold the dominion over all Europe. Esau detaining in captivity his brother Jacob, at least as far as regards the tribe of Judah, till his Messiah Ben David shall appear. Meaning until Christ shall appear, read. Secondly, that the prophecies of the prophets against Esau, Edom, Seir, and the cities of Edom, especially Wait, wait, wait. We can't even see it. Go ahead. Especially those of Isaiah. So those prophecies of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, and Obadiah, and Obadiah, have not yet received their full accomplishment. There's prophecies in those three books, the scholars say, which have not been fulfilled yet. Go ahead. For so that, when people say, the Edomites have been destroyed already, that's a lie. All you got to do is go to Obadiah. This, this, that, that hasn't been fulfilled. Jeremiah 49 hasn't been fulfilled. Isaiah 14 ain't been fulfilled. Okay. Isaiah 14, go ahead. For that though the house of Esau has experienced some particular judgments of God. World War I, World War II. On account of the injuries at different periods of time inflicted upon Israel. Yet the final vengeance on account of that last and greatest injury. The destruction of the second temple by Titus and the transportation of the Jews into captivity in which they are still most opprobriously detained. Wait, wait, wait. Y'all see that part right there? In which they are still most opprobriously detained. The scholars know the 12 tribes of Israel are still detained in captivity today. Go ahead. Is yet impending over it to be executed in the time of the Messiah, mm. that this is foretold by the prophets in all their denunciations of the severest plagues against the house of Esau, the cities of Edom, and Mount Seir, which all belong to Rome and the Christians, and that the fate of Christians at that time will be far more dreadful than that of Mohammedans. Meaning the Arabs, go ahead. Of Barbanel, particularly says the slaughter of the Turks in the future battle will not be so great as that of the Christians. Meaning he's saying the Turks are going to get a lesser judgment than Esau because Esau is the Christians they're talking about. Go ahead. For many of the Turks will escape according to Isaiah 66 verse 19. But of the Christians, Obadiah says, there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. That's right. So now let's read that again in Romans 9 and 17. Again. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 9, verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. So God raised up Pharaoh back in the past. He's comparing Pharaoh to Rome, which is Esau. And today he's comparing Esau uh, as America. Everybody see that? Esau is America. Read it again, Yuri. For this for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh. America is the new Pharaoh. Even for this same purpose have I I'll raised... I'll say it this way. I'll say it this way. Esau Edom is the new Pharaoh. Go ahead. 
For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So what I want y'all to see, see that part right there? It says, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee. Meaning, he would raise Esau up to such a level, only God can take him down. Everybody understand that? Because when, when we was in Egypt, only God could take down ancient Egypt. Watch this. I'm going to talk about now America and the European Union. Hey, give me that first article, America's military. Yes. Put that on the screen. This is the Soldiers Project. How many U.S. military bases are there in the world? When was this published? March 1st, 2023. Go ahead. The United States is one of the top five countries with the largest and most equipped armed forces in the world. Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up. Go ahead. So it is not too much of a surprise that there are many U.S. overseas military bases. Notice overseas, meaning outside of America, has military bases. Go ahead. But exactly how many U.S. military bases are there in the world? Today's article on how many U.S. military bases are there in the world will set out to explore the U.S. military bases around the world. Do you want to join us? Let's go. United, go back. United States military bases worldwide. There are roughly 750 U.S. foreign military bases. Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up. That's why when black people say to us, let's get guns, we're going to overthrow them. Are you stupid? You're not. They got 750 U.S. military bases. Outside, and not, that's not including inside America. That's 750 outside of America. Here you go with your little gun and your Glock and your uh, 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 AK. Shit, Negro, shut up. And sit your tired black behind down. You know what that's, you know what that's always also saying? You don't know how many militaries they got in the military. You don't know how many people they have. You really don't. You know how they say China have one a million something? America, you're not going to find out because right. they're all over. Mm -hmm. Read that again, Yuri. There are roughly 750 U.S. foreign military bases. They are spread across 80 nations. After the U.S. is the U.K., but they only have 145 bases. Russia has about three dozen bases and China just five. Mm. This implies that the U.S., has three times as many bases as all other countries combined. Damn. Quite astonishing, if you ask us. For your reference, our globe has a total of 195 countries. Raise it up. These are the places. Look at this. The U.S. has 11 combatant commands. Under the Pentagon headquarters, Africa Command, Central Command. Do you know what that means? If the Pentagon is ever blown up and destroyed... They got another command in Africa. They got another command. Look, y'all see that? They ain't finished. That's what I want y'all to see. They're not going to be over. The party won't be over. Go ahead. Africa Command, Central Command, Cyber Command, European Command, Indo-Pacific Command, Northern Command, Southern Command, Space Command, Special Operations Command, Strategic Command, Transportation Command. Raise it up. The first combatant command, Africa Command, protects and defends the nation's interests in African countries. You ever do, you ever, I used to always, why doesn't Africa rise up? They can't. The second they ever attempt to rise up, they're going to be ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That's why there's fear over there in Africa. Go ahead. The Central Command focuses on the Middle East. The European Command on Europe, Eurasia, and parts of the Middle East. And finally, Indo-Pacific Command, Southern and Northern Command on the territory specified in their names. The Central Command is estimated to have 45,000 to 65,000 troops across the Gulf. The European Command is estimated to have about 33,000 troops in Germany. The Indo-Pacific Command 
is estimated to have 50,000 to 55,000 troops in Japan and some 26,000 troops in South Korea. However, the specific number of troops deployed overseas are not publicly disclosed. Right, they don't tell their numbers. Only a dumb black guy tells the numbers. We got such and such a number. You shut up. Go ahead. Some countries with U.S. military bases. Here is a detailed list of the countries with U.S. bases as updated until 2017 on Wikipedia. The U.S. Army, Belgium, Bosnia, Herzegovina, mm -hmm. Bulgaria, Cameroon, Germany, Israel, Italy, Iraq, Japan, Kuwait, South Korea. The U.S. Air Force, Aruba, British Indian Ocean Territory, Curacao, Estonia, Germany, Honduras, Italy, Japan, Kenya, Kuwait, Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Qatar, Romania, South Korea, sovereign base areas of Akrotiri and... The they, they got bases we can't even pronounce the names. For real. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. The Kelia, Spain, Turkey, United Kingdom, U.S. Marine Corps, Germany, Japan, South Korea, U.S. Navy, Bahamas, Bahrain, British Indian Ocean Territory, Cuba, Djibouti, Greece, I Iceland, Italy, Japan, Kuwait, Oman, Peru, South Korea, Spain, the United Arab Emirates, the United Kingdom, the U.S. Coast Guard, Bahrain, Japan, the Netherlands, Singapore, the U.S. Space Force, Greenland. So, okay, that's enough. Let's go back to Romans 9 and 17 again. And you're going to try to overthrow somebody. Hey. So you still take America's book? Okay. <laughs> right. Read that again. Romans chapter 9, verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up. Go ahead. That I might show my power that in thee. That I might thee. show my power in thee. Put that on the screen. Blow it up. Look at that. So... Black man, black woman, you ain't, you little but militia groups, just be quiet. You ain't overthrowing nothing, okay? So now, what about this? Give me Revelation 17. Yes, go, hold on, go ahead. Check, check. Put that image back up there. That is full world coverage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do like the T-Mobile and the Verizon show they coverage. <laughs> right, right. We are, their military has worldwide coverage. And niggas over here talking about they're going to rise up and do something. He got the whole world on lock. 750 bases outside of America. I know everybody here know a base near their house. How I many's here? All right. Uh, but now watch. This. I'm going to show you something. Give me Revelation. Now, we always read Revelation 17, 16. Watch this. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 16. And the ten horns. The ten horns is who, brothers? European Union. Go ahead. Which thou sawest upon the beast. These shall hate the whore. The whore is the United States of America. Watch this. And shall make her desolate. They shall make her desolate. And naked. And naked. And shall eat her flesh. And burn her with fire. This place is going to be burnt up with fire. Go ahead. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. You can put that on the screen. Go ahead. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. God put in the hearts of the European Union to fulfill his will. They're going to burn America down. Read. And to agree. And to agree. And give their kingdom unto the beast. Mm -hmm. Until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Until the words of God. Until the brothers prophesy over and over when the, when it's when our time the prophesying is up that's when it's going to go down go ahead and the woman which thou sawest is that great city uh -huh. which reigneth over the kings of the earth that's the united states of america now watch this it just said america got burned down right right I'm, I'm ta am i talking to myself yeah. so now based on what you saw do you think america's finished yet Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm gonna, give me that in 2nd Ezra. 2nd Ezra 15. I'm just going to hit some key points. And I want verse mm, 46, I believe. 
Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 46. And thou Asia. And thou Asia. That art part. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, Elisha, put a, put, Asia is a, bro a broad term. We generally apply it for ch China and Japan. Hey, I already sent it to you. I sent you the link. Yes, that's it right there. Put that on the screen. Read that, Yuri. Countries in Asia. There are 48 countries in Asia today, according to the United Nations. The full list is shown in the table below with current population and subregion based on the United Nations official statistics. So we're talking about Asia. It's 48 countries. Raise it up. The ones we we focus on, China uh, has nuclear arms, India uh, I'm not sure about, does Pakistan have nuclear yeah, power? Nuclear India got nuclear arms and Pakistan. So those are the main ones right there. And then you got Japan. They got, a, what do they call it? A lot of conventional armies. And many of these places, guess what America has there that we just saw? Military bases. Let's go back. Second Ezra 1546. Yes, sir. And thou Asia that art partaker of the hope of Babylon and art the glory of her person. So Asia wants to be like America, and that's particularly you got China and Japan primarily. Go ahead. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch. Woe be unto you, Asia, mainly China, Japan. Go ahead, thou wretch. Because thou hast made thyself like unto her. You made yourself like America. Go ahead. And has decked thy daughters in whoredom. Meaning what? Their corporations. When it talks about their daughters, it's talking about their companies, their corporations. Go ahead. That they might please and glory in thy lovers, mm -hmm. which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. They always desire to do business with America. Now, for time's sake, jump down to verse 60. Watch this. Verse 60. And in the passage, they shall rush on the idle city. Write this down. The idle city here is Asia. It's talking about Asia. And in the passage, they shall rush on the idle city, the European Union. Go ahead. And shall destroy some portion of thy land. They shall destroy some portion of thy land. China, Japan shall be destroyed. Some portions of their land shall be destroyed. Watch this. And consume part of thy glory. And shall return to Babylon that was destroyed. So the U.S. military shall return to Babylon that was what? That was destroyed. Although this place is destroyed here, they coming back. It's going to be ashes to ashes, it's dust to dust. I'm letting you, I read this to let you know that their military is not finished. Their military is not finished during this war. Let's go back to Romans nine seventeen. And now we're going to get a clearer understanding on this. Read that again. Romans chapter 9, verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. So even for the same purpose of God, just as he raised up ancient Pharaoh, he raised up Esau, the new Pharaoh. Go ahead. That I might show my power in thee. Ooh, that's the part you want to look at. That I might show my power in thee. Because the EU... They sure they'll, they're going to burn up this place. But America's not, they're not finished yet. The Lord said, I'm going to take them down. I'm the only one that can take down Babylon the Great. Does everybody understand that? That's some heavy stuff right there. Go ahead. That I might show my power in thee. That I might show my power in thee. Go ahead. And that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Now let me give you some examples on that. Give me Isaiah 34 and 1. Isaiah 34 and 1. We're going to read down. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 1. Come near, ye nations. Come to near, hear. you nations, to hear. Go ahead. And hearken, ye people. And hearken, you people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein. Come up. The world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. For the righteous anger. Of the Lord is upon all nations. Watch this. And his fury upon all their armies. And his fury shall be upon all their armies. Go ahead. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath utterly destroyed them. Go ahead. He hath delivered them to the he slaughter. He delivered their armies to the slaughter. Go ahead. Their slain also shall be cast out. Mm -hmm. And their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Watch this. And all the host of heaven 
shall be dissolved. Can y'all get me? Can y'all get me? Can y'all get me what I want? Read it again. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. Go ahead, put it up. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. That's that mushroom cloud. Go ahead. Now that's a little mushroom cloud right there, Alicia. Do y'all have a major mushroom cloud? I still see buildings standing. I need something with no buildings. I need Armageddon explosion. End of the world explosion. That's what I need. That's what we are looking for. That, that, that's, that's okay. That's better. You can put that up there. So, Yuri, can you read it again for us? Yes, sir. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. That's that scroll, that mushroom cloud. Go ahead. And all their host shall fall down. When it says all their hosts shall fall down, their missiles, their satellites, their jets, their airplanes, their bombers, all of them things that's in the air shall fall down. Go ahead. As the leaf falleth off from the vine. Come on. And as a falling fig from the fig tree. Watch this. For my sword. For my sword, God says. Shall be bathed in heaven. Go ahead. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Upon who? Idumia. Can y'all get me that year? Uh, Elisha, can y'all get me Idumia? Get me Idumia. Y'all should have had it from last week. There should be no confusion. Idumia. As soon as we read verse 1, that should right there. Put it up there. Put it on the screen. Read that. Idumia pertaining to Wait, Edom. Get me off the screen. It's covering the words, Alicia. Read again. Idumia pertaining to Edom. Greek and Roman name for Edom. Greek and Roman name for Edom. Let's go back. Isaiah 34 and 5 one more time. Yes, sir. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. 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 Yes, it includes the European Union. It also includes the remnants of Babylon the Great. The United States of America. All them bases they got, the Lord said, I'm the only one that can destroy them. I'm the only one that can take them down. Give me that in Isaiah 47, Yuri. You know what I want? Yes, sir. It's a little more. Oh, go ahead. And upon the people of my curse. Right. Edom is the people of God's curse, meaning this shall be none remaining of Esau forever. Everybody see that? Give me that in uh, Isaiah 47, I believe it is. Uh, it might be the last verse, and I will, or might be above it. Uh, it's verse 3. Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Talking about the daughter of Babylon. Their nakedness shall be uncovered. That's what we do. When we prophesy on the streets, when we teach, we're uncovering their nakedness. They're not a Christian nation. They're not the Jews. We're uncovering their nakedness, their sin. Go ahead. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. You see what the Lord said, I will not meet thee as a man. When Christ returns, he said, I'm not going to come back in that weak form that he, you put a crown of thorns on my head. I'm not going to be that type of a guy you nailed to the cross anymore. I'm going to meet you as God. Y'all see that? That's what he's saying right there. And notice verse 1. Read verse 1. Verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Read. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the child. Meaning beings. your kingdom is finished, the Lord said. Go ahead. For thou Read. shalt no more be called tender and delicate. You shall no more be called Christian or Jewish. Go ahead. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance. And I will not meet thee as a man. So remember, so it's letting you know only the Lord can take down Babylon 100%. Everybody see that? I hope you all understand that. From there, give me Isaiah 63 and 1 and let's read down. Even Remember why we were going to these precepts. Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout the earth. Everybody understand that? The Lord's going to make sure that everybody glorifies him. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Mm -hmm. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Go ahead. With dyed garments from Basra. Uh-huh. 
this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Why are your garments red, Lord? Go ahead. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine Why does it look like grape juice is all on your clothes, Lord? Go ahead. I have tried in the wine press alone. I was stomping grapes alone. And guess what? The wine press is the earth. Go ahead. And of the people, there was none with me. And of the Israelites, there was none to help me. God didn't need your help. Go ahead. For I will tread them in mine anger. I will tread Edom in mine anger. Because verse 1 tells you, who is this that cometh from Edom? Edom is America. Edom is the EU. Edom is France, Germany. Y'all see that? Read on. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury and their blood. Their what? Their blood. So the wine that Isaiah thought it was, it's blood. And their blood, go ahead, shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my rain. Read. For the day of vengeance. This day of vengeance. Vengeance. Come on. Is in mine heart. Is in mine heart. And the year of my redeemed is come. And the year of my redeemed is come. Revelation 17, 12, please. Revelation 17. Remember why we're going to these precepts. Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Read that, Yuri. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 12. And the ten horns. And the ten horns, the EU. Which thou sawest are ten kings, mm -hmm. which have received no kingdom as yet. Which have received no kingdom as yet during the time of John the Revelator. Go ahead. But receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Uh -huh. These have one mind. These have one mind. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. They're going to give their economic power and military power to support America for one hour. Go ahead. These shall make war with the land. These shall make war with the son of God. And the lamb shall overcome them. And the lamb, Christ, the son of God, shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords. He's Lord of lords. And king of kings. And king of kings. And they that are with him are called. And they that are with him are called. And chosen. And chosen. And faithful. And faithful. Give me Revelation 19, 11. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. And I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he do a judge and make war. Make what? And make war. Make what? And make war. Make what? And make war. Who said Christ is coming back to hugs and kiss everybody? He's coming back to make war. Go ahead. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. That's right. And he, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. His name is called the Word of God. Go ahead. And the armies. And the armies. Which were in heaven. Which were in heaven. Go ahead. Followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So there's armies in heaven that's coming with the Son of God. Go ahead. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he just smite the nation. That sharp sword that comes out of his mouth is what, brothers? The word, the law of God. Give me that precept, Yuri, in 2 Ezra 13, I believe it is. What is it? 13 and 9. Thank you. 2 Ezra 13 and 9. 2 Ezra chapter 13 and verse 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. Mm. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude, which was prepared to fight. So the multitude is the EU, the remnants of the United States of America, their bases, all their military bases, India, Japan, China, all of them other nations. Go ahead. And burned them up, every one, so that upon so that upon a sudden of an innumerable excuse me innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived. 
but only dust. But only dust and smell of smoke. Smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. As you said, when I saw this go down, I was afraid. Damn. Let's go on back to Revelation 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. Now, you know Mary didn't have sex with no daggone angel. The angel stand in the sun. You crazy. You in, you're insane. Go ahead. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses, horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast. And I saw the beast. Go and, ahead. And the kings of the earth. And the kings of the earth. So this beast goes into the EU and American remnant. Go ahead. And their armies. And their armies. Gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. That's what we read in Isaiah 34. That's what we read in Isaiah 63. That's what we read in 2nd Ezra 13 and 9. Go ahead. And against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet. Their whole church system, go ahead. That wrought miracles. With their science. Before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Everybody that follows the po policies of America shall be deceived, go ahead. And them that worship his image. And them that worship his damnable image, go ahead. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, mm. and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Give me a sec. Let's go back to Second Ezra 13. I just, I, I got to go back there. I can't let that go. Can't let that go. So the mark of the beast, their policies, which is sin, whether, relig whether religiously or politically, it's sin. That's the bottom line. It takes you away from God's laws. Come on, Yuri. Which verse, sir? One. Second Ezra, chapter 13, verse 1. And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamt a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea, that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. You got to imagine the son of God, the king of kings coming down upon the earth and he turns to look and everything trembles in fear. Go ahead. They say, they go really going to say, Houston, we have a problem. Go ahead. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. Mm. And after this, I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men. Out of number from the four winds from of the, the heaven. Four winds of the heaven. Go ahead. To subdue the man that came out of the sea. The, the sea there is talking about space. Go ahead. But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. Come on. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet durst fight. Stop! You remember when the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart? Pharaoh knew he couldn't defeat it, but the Lord said, I'm going to harden his heart to make him chase the children of Israel so that I can destroy his army. Y'all remember that? It's the same thing going to happen in these last days. He's hardening Esau's heart against us. That's why in places like Mississippi, now they're trying to create Jim Crow laws. They want to bring back lynching. They want to bring back beheadings. The Lord is going to harden Esau's heart against us. I want everybody to lie on the list. I know some of you think you got some good white folk friends. So the Lord, read that again, Yuri. What verse was that? That was verse 8. Read it again. And after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, and yet there's fight. He's going to harden their heart more and more. Come on. And lo, 
as he saw the violence of the multitude that came. He neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude. Can y'all put some of the images on the screen, please? Nobody wants to see the top of my head all day. Go ahead. Read again verse 11. Yes, sir. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude. Yeah, Christ going to fall with violence upon. That's what we read in Isaiah 63. He's going to trod the wine press. Go ahead. That's the violence. Go ahead. And fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burned them up, every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and a smell of smoke. Mm. When I saw this, I was afraid. Jump down to verse 25. Verse 25. This is the meaning of the vision. Whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea, the same is he whom God the highest hath kept a great season. So God the highest is the father. Go ahead. Which by his own self shall deliver his creature, mm -hmm. and he shall order them that are left behind. He's going to order the Israelites that are left behind. Set everything in order. Go ahead. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came as a blast of wind and fire, and storm, and that he held neither sword nor any instrument of war, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. Meaning the Israelites, go ahead. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Remember, he said he's going to come like what? A thief in the night. Go ahead. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. Mm -hmm. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and a sign shall happen, which I, shall sh which I showed thee before. And then shall my son, see that, and then shall my son, this is Christ, God, be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together, as thou sawest them, willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. So all the nations are going to gather. First, they're going to be fighting each other. Christ is going to interrupt their fighting. Then they're all going to turn against him. Go ahead. But he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion. And Zion shall come and shall be shewed to all men, being prepared and builded, like as thou sawest the hill graven without hand. That's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel, verse 36. Go ahead. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations. The Lord going to rebuke their, their military, their jets, their ICBM missiles, their conventional missiles. None of that means nothing to the Lord. Go ahead. Which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest and shall lay before them their evil thoughts. You're going to lay before them their evil thoughts? Go ahead. And the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame. Watch this. And he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto fire. So the law is fire coming out of Christ's mouth, the son of God's mouth, fire. Okay, everybody understand that? We'll read Jeremiah. Give me that Jeremiah 5.14. I'm going to show you something. We'll read this about us and not understand the level of what Jeremiah is saying in the spirit. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would. This is a spiritual thing. God said his words is like fire. What kind of fire? Spiritual fire. But when the son of God come back, go back now to verse 38 again. Second Ezra 13, 38. One more again. Verse 38. Yep. And shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, 
which are like unto a flame, and he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto fire. God's word is going to be that literal fire, literal fire when he starts speaking the laws to these nations. Everybody understand that? Let's go on back to Romans 9 and 17 one more again. So now we got the thought. Romans chapter 9, verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. So God raised up Esau, the new Pharaoh. Go ahead. That I might show my power in thee. God said, I'm going to give them all kind of technological advances so that I can show my power. Go ahead. And that my name might be declared Throughout all the earth. Everybody's going to declare the name Yahweh throughout the whole earth. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. Therefore, hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. Mm. And whom he will, he hardens. Give me that. Can y'all put that on the screen? Go ahead. Y'all can put the music there. Go ahead. You can put the music. Go ahead. Rip, put it back. This is, y'all should have had this up with Isaiah 63. You just got it. Okay, put it back and play it. This goes Isaiah 63. Play it back. Go ahead. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Man, I love this stuff right there. That's the jam. Benjamin, shout out to you, Benjamin. Yeah, I saw the jam thing set. That thing is some fire stuff right there. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. All praises. Now, Yuri, where was we at? Verse 18. Okay, verse 18. Read it again. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. So who is he going to have mercy on? Give me that Luke, Luke chapter 1, verse 54, because we read Isaiah 14, 1 to 3 already. So here's another precept about mercy. Luke chapter 1, verse 54. Luke chapter 1, verse 54. He had hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. See that? He's in remembrance of his mercy. On who? Israel. Not all nations on the planet earth. Go back now. In verse 18, Romans 9, 18. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. Meaning Israel, Jacob. Go ahead. And whom he will, he hardened. Meaning who's he going to harden? Esau. Esau. He's still on the same topic. Remember, Paul speaks with words hard to be understood. Because Christians go, why did he start talking about Jacob and Esau? Esau have I hated. Then he go to Pharaoh. He's letting you know Esau would be the new Pharaoh. Okay. What verse we at, Yuri? We have verse 19. Go ahead. Thou will say then unto me, why doeth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Why does he find for who has resisted God's will everybody does what God wants go ahead nay but no oh, go ahead oh man who art thou that repliest against God who in the hell are you to reply against your maker your creator shut your ashy lips go ahead shall the thing formed say to him that formed it why hast thou made me thus yeah how could Esau jump up now and go why have you made me this way and you know what? You got some of our own people. We say you're the greatest nation on earth. And they go, no! We got to be like everybody else. But God says, you're the top. No! Our people, some of our people are retarded. They're evil and stupid. Read on. Verse 22. Excuse me, verse 21. Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor? One vessel unto honor, meaning out of, out of uh, uh, Rebecca, he made two. One vessel unto honor, which was Jacob, read, and another unto dishonor. Who's that vessel, brothers? Esau. Go ahead. Verse 23. What if God willing to show his wrath? What if God willing to show his wrath? Go ahead. And to make his power known. And and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Who's the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction? Give me that in Obadiah verse 18. Because we already read Isaiah 34. His sword will come down upon Idumi, the people of his curse. We read Isaiah 63 about who's this come from Edom, whose garments are dyed red. Now let's look at Obadiah verse 18. Obadiah verse 18. 
and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau but stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. That's it right there. Now go back to Romans 9.22 one more time again. Yes, sir. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Fitted means created to be destroyed. That's some code. So give me Isaiah 42.13. Isaiah 42 and verse 13. Isaiah 42 and verse, we're going to read 13 to 15. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. He shall prevail against his enemies. Come on. I have long time holding my peace. The Lord said I have long time holding my peace. I mean, I sat back and was quiet for centuries. I have long time holding my peace. Go ahead. I have been still mm -hmm. and refrained myself. And I refrained myself from intervening for the Israelites. Go ahead. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. Now I'm going to cry. I'm going to scream like a woman in childbirth pains. Go ahead. I will destroy and devour at once. I'm going to destroy and devour at once the nations he's talking about. Go ahead. I will make waste mountains and hills. Governments and smaller governments. Go ahead. And dry up all their herbs. Uh -huh. And I will make the rivers islands, and I will dry up the pools. And I will dry up the pools. Let's go on back to Romans 9 and 22 one more time. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Come on. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. You see that? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Who's that? Israel. Read. Which he had afore prepared unto glory. Give me that. Give me that. Here's a precept. Give me Ezekiel 39, 25. He aforetime prepared us unto glory. Ezekiel 39, 25. Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 25. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel. It will be jealous for my holy name. Do y'all see that right there? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now will I bring again. He's going to bring us back to the land. That's the captivity. Bring again the captivity of Jacob. Bring us back to the land and have mercy mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. Y'all see that thing right there? From there, give me um, Isaiah. We already read Isaiah. Give me Ephesians 111. Ephesians chapter 1. Well, you know what? I, I'm going to go back to Ezekiel 39. There's something in there I want. I just looked at it and it's popped, it's popped out to me. Go back to Ezekiel 39, 25. Let's read down. Yes, sir. Ezekiel 39, 25. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. After that, they have borne their shame. Right now, we're bearing the shame, our shame of breaking God's laws. Go ahead. And all their trespasses, whereby they have trespassed against we me. We have done many trespasses against the Most High. Go ahead. When they dwelt safely in their land, mm -hmm. and none made them afraid. Because when we was in our land back in the day, none made us afraid. Go ahead. When I have brought them again from the people. See that? When I have brought them again from the people, meaning from captivity. Go ahead. And gathered them out of their enemy's land. Where are we today? In our enemy's lands. Go ahead. And am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations. Go ahead. Then shall they know that I am the Lord their God which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. Because we're going to have learned our lesson. Go ahead. But I have gathered them unto their own land. That's what Isaiah 14, 1 and 2 was saying. Go ahead. And have left none of them anymore there. With no Israelites going to be left in the enemy's land. Go ahead. Neither will I hide my face anymore from them. For I have poured out my spirit 
upon the house of Israel. That's the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Saith the Lord God. Saith who? Saith the Lord God. Saith the Lord God. Ephesians 1.11. Ephesians chapter 1. Wait, verse wait, wait. What's up, Russian? I was excited, Bishop. I'm sorry. You're excited? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated. Pre being what? Predestinated. Brothers, sisters, all of us, in if we, when we repent, it's, we've already been predestinated. Go ahead. Was that it? According to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. According to the Most High God. Let's go on back to Romans 9. Just a little more. Go ahead. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. That's right. Let's go back to Romans 9. We're in verse 24. Romans chapter 9, verse 24. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only. So now he's going to explain the mercy. Okay. Paul is getting in. He's going to break down the mercy. Because the argument was, northern kingdom don't get no mercy because they were not doing animal sacrifice. That's the argument. So Paul's going to explain it here in verse, read 23 down. Yes, sir. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only. Not of Judah only. But also of the Gentiles. Now that throws Christians off right there, but also of the Gentiles. Give me that in uh, Acts 13, 46. The Gentiles that were called. Some of y'all Christians sitting right now going, mm -hmm, they got you right there. Got you, nigga. Got you. Acts, Acts 13, 46. Acts chapter 13 and verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Spoken to you. First be spoken to you. You who? You Jews. Go ahead. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Oh, we turn to the Gentiles. Oh, these Gentiles. Give me Matthew 4.15. No, give me Zechariah 12.7 and Matthew 4.15. Here's a prophecy about Acts 13.46. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. It was necessary that the word of God should first be spoken to you. Go ahead. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Y'all see that? So the Jews had to hear the word first. Okay. Uh, Matthew 4.15. And the, re the reason they had to hear it first so that the other tribes don't try to overtake them. Matthew chapter 4, verse 15. The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. So Zebulon and Naphtali were called Gentiles. Give me Isaiah 11. Anytime you go to Isaiah 11, start at verse 10. There's a reason. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 10. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse. The root of Jesse is Christ. Go ahead. Which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Watch this. To it shall the Gentiles seek. You want to stress that right there. To it shall the Gentiles seek. To it shall the Gentiles seek. So the ensign today, we know Christ already ascended on high. So it's just making a reference to the Bible. This is the ensign. To it shall the Gentiles seek, go ahead, and his rest shall be glorious. So now he's going to explain and break down the Gentiles in case you're wondering. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. The remnant of who? Of his people. Go ahead. Which shall be left from Assyria uh -huh. and from Egypt Read. and from Pathros uh -huh. and from Cush Read. and from Elam mm -hmm. and from Shinar mm. and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Come on. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations. Why? And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. So it's explaining that the Gentiles are the outcasts of what, brothers? Israel. Israel. Read. And gather together the dispersed of Judah. And the dispersed of Judah. From the four corners of the earth. So that's why you want to start with verse 10, where it stipulates Gentiles. 
Now, Isaiah explained. Everybody understand that? Let's go on back to Romans 9, verse 24 again. Romans chapter 9, verse 24. As he saith also in O.C. Romans 9, 24. Excuse me. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only. Not of Judah only. But also of the Gentiles. The scattered remnants of Israel and Judah is going to be gathered together. Everybody understand that? Read. As he saith also in O.C. I will O.C. Call is Hosea. Write that down. O.C. is the Greek word for Hosea. Read again. As he saith also in O.C. I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. Here's the precept, Hosea 2.23. Hosea 2.23. Paul is quoting the prophet Hosea. And Christians don't like to go to the quotes because they get cut. Hosea chapter 2 and verse 23. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. Because it sure looked like we had not obtained mercy. That's what slavery seemed like. Go ahead. And I will say to them, which were not my people, uh -huh. thou art my people, and they shall say, thou art my God. Y'all see that? Do y'all see that? Yes, Let's go on back and read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 25. As he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There shall they be called the children of the living God. Hosea 1 and 10 and 11, that's the precept. Remember, he's quoting who, brothers? Hosea, the prophet Hosea. Hosea, chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel. Children of who? The children of Israel. Go ahead. Shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass. That in the place where it was said unto them, uh -huh. ye are not my people. How is it said we're not God's people? We're called by Gentile names. African-American, Puerto Rican, Dominican, okay, Haitian, Jamaican, so forth and so on. Read. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Ye are the sons of the living God. Was that it, Yuri? Yes, sir. Let's go on back. Verse 26 again. Verse 26. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. So Paul's quoting Hosea about who, brothers? Israel. Come on. Isaiah also. Now, Isaiah is Isaiah. Write that down. Isaiah is Isaiah. Go ahead. That's the Greek word. Read. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. So quoting Isaiah is chapter 10 of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 22. Read that. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 22. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 22. For though thy people Israel. Thy people who? Thy people Israel. Read. Be as the sand of the sea. Yet a remnant of them shall return. Why does it say yet a remnant of them shall return? Because they are not all Israel which are of Israel. All Israel is not going to repent. Read it again. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. A remnant of us shall repent. Go ahead. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Let's go on back now. Back to Romans 9 and verse 27. One more again. He saith also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Only a remnant of our people is going to be saved, brothers, sisters, only a remnant. Am I going too fast? They said, yeah. All right, I'm sorry. All right, Yuri, where are we at? I'm blaming you, Yuri. I take no accountability. <laughs> <laughs> we just read verse 27. Okay, so we are in verse 28 now. 28. Verse 28. For he will finish the work. The Lord will finish the work. And cut it short in righteousness. And cut it short in righteousness. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. The Lord's going to make a short work on this earth. Give me that in um, 2 Ezra 2.13. 
Second Esdras chapter two and verse thirteen. Second Esdras chapter two and verse thirteen. Go and ye shall receive. Pray for few days unto you. Pray for what? For few days unto you, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. Brothers, sisters, the kingdom's already prepared. It's already done. Ain't nobody got to do nothing. It's there already. From there, give me Matthew 24, 22. Matthew chapter 24. Verse 22, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. Those days shall be short. Let's go on back now to Romans 9. We were in verse 28 again. Yes, sir. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth, hath left us a seed. We had been as Sodom and had been made like unto Gomorrah. Uh, uh, Officer Asa, what's Sabaoth? Come on up. Come on the mic. It's not a trick question. Read it again for him. Yes, sir. Verse 29. Except as Isaiah say before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and had been made like unto Gomorrah. You're on. You forgot. Why did you say that over there? As we watch you, him and ha. And mumble to brothers, do you know the answer? Do you know the answer? Somebody help me. Uh, Elisha, put it on the screen. Read that. Sabaoth. The transliteration of the Hebrew word Shabaoth, meaning host, armies. That's what it means, Lord of armies or Lord of hosts. Okay, write that down. So let's read it again, Officer Yuri. And as Isaiah said before, Except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed. We had been as Sodom and had been like and been made like unto Gomorrah. So if the Lord didn't leave a seed of Israelites to repent, all of us, listen good. I know, I know it's a brother, not me. Yeah, you too. It said we would all be like what, Yuri? Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. Now, give me Revelation 11 and 8. Here's a precept. Here's a precept. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city is the United States of America. Which spiritually. Which spiritually, because this ain't the real. Um, uh, read it again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Which spiritually uh -huh. is called Sodom. This ain't the real Sodom, but this is a spiritual Sodom. And Egypt. And this is a spiritual Egypt. This ain't the real Egypt either. Go ahead. Where also our Lord was crucified. This ain't the place where Christ was crucified. His image was crucified here. His teachings were crucified here. Okay. So when it says this place is a spiritual Sodom, give me that in Isaiah 1 and 9. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9. Not me, Bishop, not me. Okay. Okay. Okie dokie. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and would have been like unto Gomorrah. Now that's the prophecy. Go to chapter 3 of Isaiah and verse 9. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 9. The the show of their countenance doth witness against them. The show of their countenance doth wit meaning their face witnesses against them. Go ahead. The show of their countenance doth witness against them. And this is talking about Israelites, by the way. Go ahead. 
and they declare their sin as Sodom. Wicked Israelites declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. They don't try to hide it no more. Go ahead. Woe unto their soul. Woe unto their soul. For they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Give me Jeremiah 6.15. Jeremiah 6.15. Not me, Bishop. Okay. All you want to be, would be rappers, you'd be the first ones in a dress. Am I lying? Nope. Jeremiah 6.15. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 6. 15. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Were the Israelites ashamed when they committed abomination? Come on. Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Mm -hmm. Neither could they blush. The Israelites couldn't even blush. Go ahead. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. Uh -huh. At the time that I visit, visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Read. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths. So, stand in the way and see is talking about this Bible. Stand in the old paths is talking about this Bible. Go ahead. Where is the good way? And ask where is the good way. Go ahead. And walk therein. And walk in this book. Go ahead. And is that shall, it? And you shall find rest for your souls. And you shall find rest for your souls. Go ahead. But they said... We will not walk therein. You hear what our people said? We ain't walking in them old paths. We ain't walking in that good way. Give me the first picture right there. Put it on the screen. There you go. Benjamin. No, that ain't Benjamin. That looked like, I'll say Levi. I'll say Levi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Levi. Yeah, Levi. Levi. There you go. It said they can't blush. The show of their countenance doth witness against them. They're not ashamed. Give me the next image. What the hell is this? <laughs> the hell is this? We're going to say that's Ephraim or Simeon. No. We're going to throw that to y'all. Give me the next one. Now, y'all know that's Benjamin. Blow it up big. Back shot, back shot, back shot, back shot. The hell is this? Get, it, and he's in, the, he's in the gully. He's in the gully. Give me the next one. Look at that. More Benjamin. Blow it up big. Blow it up, man. Blow it up. Put makeup on your face. Move me now. Look at your Ross Claude, you nasty. Uh, what the hell is this? Putting wigs on. Sister, get back your wig. He snatched it. Putting it on his own head. The hell is this? And he in the damn gully. The hell is the give me the next one. Blow look at the hell two bro, big bro, niggas. Bro, bro. If you don't get your big black nasty foot, me kick you with me foot now. Me go and kick you with me foot. The hell is this? What the hell is some nasty stuff? Give me the next one. Look at Ephraim. That's Ephraim. Ask Ephraim, y'all thought you was going to escape. You Puerto Ricans thought you was going to escape. You ain't escaping. Hey, the brothers. Brothers. Yeah, you better watch out going to them clubs. You don't know what you're going to get. Stand on damn clubs. Give me the next one. That's the Dominican. Right? Y'all remember this dude? How his hole closed up. Yeah! It was healing. You old Dominicans, y'all don't escape either. All right, with your nasty behinds. Yuri, let's go on them back. You could take this filth off the screen. Let's go on back to Romans 9. And what verse was we in, Yuri? We read 29 about Sodom and Gomorrah. Read that again. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been made as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. Brothers, sisters, I know it's a hard thing, but... The word of God is meant for them to do what? Repent. So the word goes out for them too. Men, and give me that 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Yuri. Because I know like, no, they can. some Israelite camps say they can never repent. That's not true. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 down. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, 
nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's the homosexual right there, and that feminist, them brothers that cross their legs like a woman, like you ain't got nothing down there. What the hell is wrong with you? Go ahead. Nor thieves. Nor thieves. Nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. That's the point right there. Such were some of you. But ye are washed. But you are washed. You repented. But ye are sanctified. You are sanctified. But ye are justified. You are justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So and, go ahead. And by the spirit of our God. So repentance is open to all of our people. Everybody understand that? Go back to Romans 9. What verse we're in, Yuri? We're in verse 30. Go ahead. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness. So now we know who these Gentiles are, according to Matthew 4, 15, Isaiah 11, 10 to 12. Scattered Israelites, the outcasts of Israel, the dispersed of Judah. Everybody with me? Sure. Go ahead. Have, what shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. Give me that in Isaiah 46, verse 13. Isaiah 46 and verse 13. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 13. I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Y'all see who salvation is for? Israel, his glory. Okay, so let's go on back. So read it again, Yuri, verse 30. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness. Meaning, those scattered Israelites, they were not brought up under the law of Moses. They had never heard about Christ. They were raised up under Gentile philosophies, Greek and Roman uh, philosophies. Just like our people today, brought up under American Christian philosophies, Islamic philosophies. That's what it means. So read that again, Yuri. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, mm -hmm. have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. Which is Christ. Remember, we have to have faith in Christ. So they, the apostles and the disciples went out teaching to those Israelites scattered abroad. Everybody understand that? Read on. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, that's those scribes, those Pharisees, Sadducees, that was brought up under the law of Moses at that time. Now, when you bring it up to today, you'll say, but there is no uh, Pharisees and Sadducees today. Well, then you got to relate it to who are those religious ones today? Those Christians brought up in, under Christianity. Our people brought up under Islam. Okay, let's read it again. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness. Or oh, they thought they did. Go ahead hath not attained to the law of righteousness. What does that part mean? But have not attained to the law of righteousness. They not understood the law in Christ. Give me that in Romans 10. And what verse? Verse 3? 3 and 4. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 10, verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. So now, I'm going to bring it to you. What it's talking about, the scribes, Sadducees, Pharisees. Everybody with me? That's what's initially talking about. Read it again, Yuri. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. If I go celebrate Christmas, I'm good. I'm bringing it up to today now. Because the argument will be, today there's no scribes. There's no Pharisees or Sadducees. What are you talking about? Let's bring it up to today. They go, what? Read it again, Yuri. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. I will celebrate white Jesus on Christmas. I will celebrate white Jesus on Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day. Then another group of our people go, I will celebrate. Go ahead, put it on the screen. Put it on the screen. Just put, they, they, they'll go, oh, if I make my hajj, I'll, 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 God will accept me. Or if I'll be Judaism, I'll go to the Wailing Wall and I'll hump it and I'll dive in against this wall. Read it again, Yuri. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. See that they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. He's going to explain it now. Go ahead. 
For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. What does it mean Christ is the end of the law? What law? Animal sacrifice. Very good. You can read about that in Hebrews 10. Okay, write that down in case you're new. Read. Verse 5. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Mm -hmm. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? Don't say who shall ascend into heaven. Why? That is, to bring Christ down from above. That means you don't believe that Christ ascended. Go ahead. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. Because that means you don't believe he died for us. Okay. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So all Israel has to repent. That's what that verse means, repent. That don't just mean just say Jesus Christ or your house shy and you good. No, it's talking about repentance, true, sincere repentance. Let's go back to Romans 9. What verse we in, Yuri? We stopped at 31. Read 31 again. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, have not attained to the law of righteousness. Right. Let me give you some more examples about Israel not attaining to the law of righteousness back then. Mark 8.31. Israel not attained. What did they do? What did those scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees do? Mark chapter 8 verse 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. And be rejected of the elders. Be rejected of the elders of and, Israel. And of the chief priests. Be rejected of the chief priests. And scribes. And be rejected by the scribes. And be killed. And be killed. And after three days, rise again. That's it. Let's go back to Romans 9. What verse was that? 31 again? Yes, sir. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Because they rejected Christ. They killed Christ, the Son of God, just like our people do today. They reject the black Messiah. They reject his teachings of keeping God's commandments. They even reject that we're the Israelites. Go ahead. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith. They sought it not by faith. But as it were, by the works of the law. They sought it by the works of the law. Put, um, put it, give me the one, the works of the law. The works of the law. Elisha, right there, put, put it on the screen. This is what it means. Read that again, Yuri. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. This is how they thought they'd get salvation, animal sacrifice. Go ahead. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. They stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion. Wait, wait, wait. Give me Revelation twenty two fourteen. Because the Christian always try to be slick. We don't got to keep the commandments. We go into the last book of the Bible. Not only the last book, we go into the last chapter. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. That's the only way you're getting into New Jerusalem. By keeping the commandments. So anybody that tells you you don't got to keep the commandments, you better head for the hills. You better run from them. Go back to Romans 9 and read 32 again. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone. What does it mean they stumbled at that stumbling stone? Give me Ephesians 2.20 to explain that. Ephesians 2.20. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Y'all see that? He meaning chief cornerstone means he's the leader. He's the king. He's the Lord. Y'all understand that? Let's go back. Romans 9, 32. One more again. Romans chapter 9, verse 32. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law, 
for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Let me give you some more. Isaiah 8, 14. Here's some more for that stumbling stone. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 14. About that stumbling stone. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 14. And he shall be for a sanctuary. But, Talking about Christ. Go ahead. But for a stone of stumbling. You see that? But for a stone of stumbling. Go ahead. And for a rock of offense. And for a rock of offense. Because many people are offended that they got to keep the commandments. They are offended. Women can't dress like men nor men dress like women. They are offended at Christ. They're offended at the way he's described in the Bible. Woolly hair, that's an offense to me. Skin like it burned in a furnace, I'm offended at that. Read it again. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin, a trap, and for a snare uh -huh. to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Go ahead. And many among them shall many among the Israelites shall stumble, shall stumble at the teachings of Christ. And fall. And they shall fall because of the teachings of Christ. And be broken. They're going to be broken. And be snared. Uh -huh. And be taken. And taken. Read. Bind up the testimony. So now it commands us, bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. The word disciple means student. If we are students of Christ, that we must seal the law in our minds. Everybody understand that? Sure. Give me 1 Peter 2.4. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. To whom coming as unto a living stone. And unto whom coming as unto a living stone. Christ is that living stone. Go ahead. Disallowed indeed of men. Disallowed means rejected. You know, rejected indeed of men. Come on. But chosen of God. But chosen of God. And precious. And precious. Ye also as lively stones. You Israelites also. Every man, every woman also as lively stones. We are all living stones. Go ahead. Are built up. We a, are all built up. A spiritual house. We are all built up into a spiritual house. Go An, ahead. Unholy priesthood. And, ho and we are, a, men, we are a holy priesthood. Go ahead. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. We offer up spiritual sacrifices. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. What verse was that? That was verse 5. Read. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. It contains in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion. I lay in Zion. A chief cornerstone. A chief cornerstone. A leader of the people. Go ahead. Elect precious elect and precious and he that believeth on him and he that believeth on the son of god the king of kings lord of lords shall not be confounded shall never be confounded unto you therefore which believe he is precious unto you therefore which believe he is precious but unto them which be disobedient but unto those israelites that be disobedient the stone which the builders disallowed. The stone which the builders disallowed. Them builders were those scribes and Pharisees. Today it's your church leaders. Your politicians. The black ones and Latino ones. Why? Because they were supposed to build us up. But they've done a horrible job. Just like the old scribes and Pharisees. Go ahead. The same is made the head of the corner. Christ is made the leader. That's what it means, head of the corner. He's the leader. Go ahead. What verse you at? I'm at verse 8 now. Go ahead. And a stone of stumbling. Christ is that stone of stumbling. And a rock of offense. Christ is that rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word. Even to them that stumble at the word of God. Was that it, Yuri? No, sir. Being disobedient. Being disobedient. Whereunto also they were appointed. Your Christian leaders, your black and Latin politicians, they're all appointed to fall. Everybody understand that? Matthew 21, 42. Matthew 21, verse 42. Matthew, chapter, tw chapter 21, verse 42. Mm -hmm. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? Christ is that stone. The stone which the builders rejected. Why does it keep calling them builders? Because just like you built up your child to manhood or womanhood, these leaders were supposed to build us up as a people to a proud and mighty nation. 
These church leaders have failed. These black and Latin politicians have failed. Read it again. Jesus saith unto them, did he never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Regardless that they rejected Christ, he's still the leader. He's still the king. He's still the Lord. Go ahead. This is the Lord's doing. This is the Lord's doing. The Lord was behind all of that. Go ahead. And is it marvelous in our eyes? And it is marvelous in our eyes. Go ahead. Therefore, say I unto you. Therefore, the Lord says to us. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you builders, you religious people, you politicians. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you. Go ahead. And given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. And given to a nation bringing forth the commandments. That's the fruits thereof. The commandments. Read. And whosoever shall fall on this stone. And whosoever shall fall on the son of God. Shall be broken. Shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall. Uh -huh. It will grind him to powder. On whosoever Christ shall fall. He shall kill them. That's what that means. Go on back to Romans 9. We almost done. We almost done. What verse we at, Yuri? We just, we were at verse 32. Go ahead. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, mm -hmm. but as it were by the works of the law. Mm -hmm. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Read. As it is written. As it is written. Behold, I lay in Zion. I a, lay in Israel. A stumbling stone. A stumbling stone, which is Christ. And rock of offense. And he also is that rock of offense. Go ahead. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Put those images up. Right there. Let's, let's put the, whosoever believeth on him, brothers, sisters, shall not be ashamed. Give me the next one. We, brothers, we ain't going to be ashamed. Right. Hope y'all understand that, okay? We will not be ashamed. Understand this. The Bible says, brothers, sisters, the Bible says we win. At the end of all this, we win. That's what Romans 9 is explaining. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. We win, but to win, brothers, sisters, we must believe we win, okay? We must prepare to win and expect to win. Do y'all understand that? Yes, Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. 12 tribes? Worldwide. 12 tribes? Worldwide. And with that, we say shalom. Check, check. Hey, y'all, real quick before y'all do these. Man, this should be doing these classes, man. I be ready to, I be ready to go out there, man. What's happening, bro? I'm telling you, bro, I be feeling like, you know what I'm saying? Let's just go right now. <laughs> Ain't nobody outside, but we just going to be there. Huh? Hey, all praise to the most high God. If you ain't in the spirit after that, man, you better fix your whole face and your life, bro. Right. All praise to the Father, man. Mic check, mic check. All right, let's go to Trinidad and Tobago. Reporting live from the valley of the dry bones, Elijah.
Carnival Tuesday, we out here spreading the wood. Crying out loud. Do not prostitute thy daughter. I think my Bible came alive. All praise, all praise. Nation is family. IUIC Trinidad and Tobago finished their 28 days of camp, bringing fire to the streets daily. All praise to the most high. The Lord got the victory, and the sheep have been fed. All right, let's go to IUIC Jackson. No game. We gotta wake the people up, bro. 144 guys on the block, yeah, day. 144 kings, get these heaters out the way. 144k, about the work, no time to play. 144k, real my nation all the way. 144 guys on the block, yeah, day. 144 kings, get these heaters out the way. 144k, about the work, no time to play. 144k, real my nation all the way. The most I got a just man, he ain't gonna go with this. IUIC Jackson, New Orleans, Arkansas, Dallas, and Shreveport came together for the Black Heritage Parade in Monroe, Louisiana. You know Captain Shim was in the spirit as he led the men to war and set a great example for our people. All right, let's go to Dallas. I mean, not Dallas, Denver. Let's go to Denver. Spanish and slaughtering Indians would have a priest standing by with holy water available as they disemboweled pregnant Indian women. If the fetus exposed momentarily to the outside world breathed or showed signs of life, the priest could baptize it before the soldiers smashed its head against the wall thereby giving it an immediate audience with the Lord. You guys probably heard about the long walk. Mm -hmm. You know, how the Navajos were persecuted and, mm -hmm. and um, taken out of their homeland and put in another homeland and how they um, came up with dormitories and tried to um, get these um, Navajos to be like, like whites and... You know, like the missionaries, like to be like the missionaries. The yep. missionaries were not there to help them seek the Lord. We come from the tribe of Gad. We are not Native Indian. We are not Cherokee. We are not uh, 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 Choctaw. We are not none of that. We are the tribe of Gad. All oh, praises. The prophets of IUIC Denver broke ground on a local reservation where they are scared to speak out against the racism they are receiving from the $5 vagabonds on their own land. They sat down with a Gadite pastor and his wife that wants to learn more about their heritage and even invited to take us personally to a Navajo reservation just hours away. All praise to the Most High. Press play. Um, the description that was shown in Joseph's dream is actually the true imagery and what Christ and the Israelites and the Romans look like. So, um, 
Once again, I'm Brother O.C., this is Brother Tyler Wine. We're here from the Lions Den Radio Show, and uh, Brother Mike invited us um, to do this presentation, and we're honored to be able to speak to you guys. So, y'all give me about 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to get Yeah. Count me out, go and say whatever you want. Go on, yeah. But you know we got to keep the thing going. You know it. You know it. We be on the road. Everybody knows. All praises. IUIC Orlando had the opportunity to showcase Joseph's dream to the public and do a black history presentation afterwards. All praises. Let's go to the next one, original royalty. Yo, Shalom, Shalom. What's going on, man? Where are you? Yo, yo, yo. Why you taking so long, bro? You got man sitting here, man. Hurry up. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. I said I was going to be there. One sec. I was coming up right now, right now. Give me a sec. I'm coming up right now. One sec. I'm repenting. Oh, damn. Darn. I can make it rock. I can make it drop. Uh -huh. Do your thing, go. I can make it rock. Uh -huh. I can make it drop. Uh -huh. Do your thing, go. I can make it rock. Uh -huh. I can make it drop. Uh -huh. Do your thing, go. I can make it rock. Uh -huh. I can make it drop. Uh -huh. Like, who make it rock? Roll around on your block. KJ1611, we pull up on your block. Pull up at the spot. Cat signs out. Who make it rock? Teaching the people repent from them sins. That's Acts 531. Repentance. Psalm 19 and 7. Convert the mind of the Lord. Is Convert in your soul. Convert in your mind. It's high time. Convert in your soul. Let's be just as good. Converting your way, conforming your mind. Romans 12 and 2. The spiritual war, spiritual fight. Ephesians 6 and 12. I can make it rock, I can make it drop. Uh -huh. Do your thing, go. I can make it rock, uh -huh. I can make it drop. Uh -huh. Do your thing, go. I can make it rock, I can make it drop. Uh -huh. Do your thing, go. Six all right, all right, all praise to the most high. Premiering tonight on original royalty recordings, the UK is back again ASAP Judah with his fifth video release, Rock With It, from his debut studio album, Kingdom Currency. You can get that now at original royalty in all digital stores and streaming sites. Also, you have the merchandise. You got new original royalty recordings merchandise available now at OriginalRoyalty.com. All right. You got the next presentation to pass over? <coughs> all right. How many of y'all registered for Passover? Yeah. All right. All right. I don't see a lot of hands. I don't see a lot of hands. Some hands. Those are the visitors. Okay, okay. Well, great news. I know y'all was, uh, was worried. Registration was closed. Um, wherever it's sundown, registration will reopen immediately and it will close on Monday, March 20th. So you have this week all the way to the next Monday to register. After that, we are not going to reopen it. We got thousands of people coming. We got to prepare. We got to prepare. So we can't keep reopening it, closing it, reopening it, closing it. You need to register this week. Everybody understand that? So if you need to get an advance on your tax return, make it happen. Make it happen. All right? And that will conclude the announcements. First Corinthians. Does everybody have bread and wine? If not, raise your hand. I'll oh, praise you. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. I almost broke my tooth. No, oh, and then uh, this. Hey, hey, hey! Some of you scared to speak up. That's your problem. <laughs> All right, brothers. Hey, give them now the prayer for the Lord. Lord, putting the spirit on leadership class today, man. All right, brothers, let's bring it down. Let's bring it home. Many Israel, are you ready? Always ready. Are you ready? Always ready. What time is it? What time? what time is it? What time, what time is it? Time? Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. What color is he? Right. What color is he? Right. What color is he? Right. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. Unity. 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 Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Faith. Patient. Salvation. Faith. Patient. Salvation. Now finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Here's what? Here's what? Here's what? Here's what? 